Welcome to Bern in Switzerland for the final finals for the women's boulder and lead competition. This is one of the most hyped nights in climbing and my name is Matt Groom. I'm joined by Shauna Coxey. We'll be calling all of the action for you today. And Shauna, let's just explain for a second why this comp is so important. What's at stake here tonight? Well, Matt, it is the Olympic selection that is at stake. Our top three men and top three women at this event will be getting their Olympic spots. So the top three women on the podium, those athletes are going to Paris 2024. That's what's at stake. It's crazy to think of that. We gave away some Olympic tickets last night for the speed competition. And tonight, our podium finishers will each receive one. And of course, that winning position. And, and something that you mentioned to me is uh, Serato especially. He was saying that he just wants to win this thing. He doesn't really care about the Olympic tickets, which blows my mind. Yeah, me too, a little bit. We talk about athletes um, showing their aspirations, what, what they want to do here. Many athletes being very vocal about the fact that they are here to get that ticket. Of course, there's a world championships going on all at the same time. So not only will they get a ticket, they'll get a world championships medal. But Serato being one athlete who isn't even thinking about the Olympic Games, he is <laughs> All eyes on that gold medal, but that is tomorrow, and tonight we have the women. Exactly, that men's final tomorrow, and the women are our focus tonight. This was earlier on in the evening, the observation period. There are four boulders out there, and the scoring system is a little bit different from a normal competition. I'll explain that, but looking at this wall, different angles, Shauna, and of course, different boulders set, different styles out there on the wall. Really different styles. We've seen the root setters being very specific in each boulder. These boulders look pretty hard, I think. We've been out there on the mats and had a good close look at them. There are some big holds on the wall, some, some jugs, you might say, but the jugs that are on the wall are far apart and they are put in these positions that make it really, really difficult to hold on to them. And then you've got some teeny tiny holds, some really interesting movements too. Exactly. Well, that's ahead of us. And you can see how complicated they are on the wall. Lots of holds and two scoring opportunities, two zones. And that's because this comp is a new system where we're scoring the boulder out of 100. 100 maximum points, 25 points per boulder. And that will be added to the lead later on. So welcome if you're just joining us to Bern for the final night of the women's boulder and lead comp. Eight athletes here, three podium finishers, and those podium finishers will get an Olympic ticket. Jeanne Kim there, Shauna. I mean, what a return she's had to the IFSC circuit. Yeah, what a return she's had, and it is just so amazing to see her in her comfort zone, looking really strong, and just showing what, what athletes can do. She's a mother, she's had her child come back to the event. I'm gonna mention it every single competition that she is in, it's incredible. But also we've got next to her, Annie Sanders, significantly younger, less than half her age, actually. Annie's 16, Jayanne 34, I believe, so yeah. It's a, it's a mixed field out there. It really is. And then next to them, Jessie Piltz from Austria. Her eyes looking at this huge crowd here in the auditorium, which are heating things up. And Miho Nanaka, I mean, we have many Olympians in this final already. Uh, and Miho, one of those. Yeah, both Jessie and Miho, Olympians competed in Tokyo. But Miho winning a medal at the Olympic Games and also coming back to the medal winning IFSC stage this year with a gold medal in Boulder. So definitely one to watch here. She is. And then Brooke Rabatou comes out onto the stage with a big wave standing in her designated spot. 22 and a, a pretty talented athlete. Talented athlete and also an Olympian. Yeah, she's one of our four and looking in her own zone, dancing around on stage there. Our judges down there, we catch a glimpse. And next up, Orihan Berton. Well, not an Olympian, but someone who certainly wants to be. Not yet, and you know some of the athletes that we're seeing out here, they weren't old enough to qualify for the previous Olympics, so definitely not worth counting them out. Yeah, and she's looking calm and collected. A big moment for the young athlete, though. And then finally, oh, next, I should say, I'm Ori out onto the stage. I'm Ori is incredibly popular within the climbing community. People love supporting her. She is and interestingly doesn't have Instagram. So I look at all the athletes social medias ahead of this event to see what they're sharing, see where they're at and how they're feeling and try and share bits of that 
as we do the stream, but yeah, nothing on I Murray. However, I do see her at breakfast every morning and she's been seeming very, very happy. <laughs> and finally, Yanya Gambaret, she's our defending Olympic champion and she'll want to add another to that. So those are our eight athletes, Shauna, and three of them will have tickets. Four Olympians in there, three people getting Olympic tickets to Paris tonight. It feels like the pressure and everything has just been mounting and mounting throughout this competition. We saw yesterday our speed athletes, the top two men and top two women, get their Olympic ticket. It suddenly all feels very real. Well, let's have a look at how these athletes got here with the highlights from the semi-final. Well, if your heart wasn't beating before that video, it certainly should do now. Intense shots there from that semi-final, and what a round it was. It was an exciting round, some big surprises, lots of try-hard, lots of fight going on on the wall. Oh, it's going to be a wild show tonight. It is. Those are our top eight athletes. They're introduced earlier on, but just a chance for you to get another look at them. Jeanne Kim qualifying in last place, so she'll climb first. Yanni Garnbrett in first place, so she will climb last. And that is Boulder 1. And Sean, a good opportunity for us to look at these zones, the new scoring opportunities. Yeah, the scoring is very different to a Boulder competition, so a Boulder World Cup or World Championships, and it's different on the lead as well. And that is because we are combining two sports, so lead and Boulder together. You can't do that on a multiplication system with rankings. It just doesn't work. Too many ties, too many opportunities for ties. So a point system was invented. Lots of different... Lots of talk and lots of testing and attempts to make a system that works and ultimately this is what was come up with and it, in my opinion it is the best, it's not perfect, we know that but it works really well to get a great separation and really test and push the athletes to the absolute max in both of these disciplines so yeah, different 
maybe a little bit tricky to get your head around in the beginning, but as it goes on and as the competition progresses, it becomes very clear and actually really easy to see what the athlete needs to do to get to a certain position. So five points for that first zone, 10 points for the second, 25 for the top, and minus 0 0.5 on every attempt to those scoring opportunities. If you get it, it's locked in. That's your score up to that point. That's the basics. It's, as you said, complicated. But Jean Kim is on the mat. She's underway, and we're underway. I actually think the zones make it so much more exciting to watch because it's like they're collecting points as they go and it changes the approach that the athletes have on the wall, it seems. A great start from Jayan, a little wobble on the first attempt, but to compose herself and get that toe hook catch on the first, second attempt was really great from her. Yeah, she's into that starting hold, crosses through to a fairly good right hand, but now this move camming those feet in between the two volumes. Yeah, so she's putting her foot in and then twisting to create a locking mechanism with her foot, um, which allowed her to be really stable through the hands, and then she hits the five points. So she's into that five point margin. She'll get minus 0 0.1 for that first attempt. Falls coming through. That's a big right hand over there. It is a huge move. Standing underneath it, you could see just how far it was and it's interesting because if you look at this climb, initially you see a series of jugs of really positive in-cut holds, and it can be hard to understand why it's difficult. As you can see, they're put on in, on in angles and positions that just are incredibly awkward and unpleasant. But if you find the right position, if you find the good flow, it'll feel good and it'll feel right. So I'm not saying the root setters have set an awkward climb, I'm just saying they've, saying they've set, a, set a tricky climb. If you're listening uh, to the lady on my right, Shauna Coxie, former athlete, master of movement, and she really knows what she's talking about, <laughs> having experienced it literally on one of these stages before. Shauna now has that left hand on underneath, right hand through with a thumb. You can really see her back foot coming there, and then she releases the foot just as she goes into that dynamic movement. And this is the move she dropped before, a big throw over to the left. Try to one-two. She did make a, an adjustment there, so her first attempt she tried to go one hand. I think maybe when she hit that, she realized that hold was not going to be good enough to stay on with that hand. The setters have said that the intended method is to go one, two. So to do that first movement and then continue the momentum into the pocket where we can see the 10 zone. So not slowing up at all until she's got both hands in a secure position. And then we'll see her engage her arms and use, like stop all of her momentum, use that strength to stop her hips swinging. Hopefully, I hope we see her stick that move. She definitely looked closer, actually just missing the right hand there, so it wasn't gonna work that time, but easily enough time for another attempt. Yeah, minute 14 on the clock. And we look down left, you can see our scoreboard. So she's got 4.9, five points for that first zone, minus 0 0.1 for the attempt to it when she fell before it was locked in. And a serious nod from her just before pulling on. She looked like she means business. She does. She's uh, on her return. You mentioned earlier a young daughter, and when we interviewed her, she said her she wanted to prove to her daughter that. Hang on, we're going to watch this first of all before I talk about Jan Kim's daughter. Gets ready for the throw. She's dropped statically. Yeah, so she planted her left foot really solid in the wall, allowing her to take that right hand off really statically. Looked like she wanted to go feet first, but I, I don't think that's going to work. She's pushing against the wall into that undercut, and all her weight's going through her left foot. To take that left foot off is just going to let her slip. But really creative climbing from her. She's asked the crowd for support, and she has 17 seconds left on the clock. She needs to be quick if she wants to collect more points. Here we go, last 10 seconds. I think she's going to try the throw method. She does not quite making that left hand into the second zone. Not quite, but a smile on her face and a huge cheer from the crowd. Now, while we transition, this isn't the athlete's only opportunity to get an Olympic ticket. There are competitions coming up as well. There are many competitions coming up. There are multiple ways to qualify. There are 20 spots available for men and 20 for women in the lead and boulder. This is the first where the first three spots are awarded. And there are then the Continental Championships and the Olympic Qualifier Series coming next year. Continentals this year, Olympic Qualifier Series next year. Yeah, there's lots of climbing ahead of us as they try to get in, but this is their first opportunity. And Jane Kim, the low zone, not the high zone, and her first boulder. It's 
somewhere back there is our next athlete. There she is, Annie Sanders walks on from the isolation zone. And such a young athlete, just 16. I can't imagine what's going through her head right now. Yeah, she is an experienced athlete in youth competitions. We've seen her have incredible success on the youth circuit. However, the transition to the adult, to the senior circuit, to the World Cups, does feel like a big one. However, Annie climbs with so much composure, so much accuracy. You just saw her flash that first move on the biggest stage that there is. Great to see her making good progress on her first attempt. And she's got a toe into the low zone. That won't count yet. She's got a hand into it. Adjusts with her hands, bumps out. And she'll set herself up for this throw. We could see her hesitating there. It was like she wasn't sure which method to commit with commit to. I expect she thought maybe she could go one hand, but she has that one, two in her mind. The athletes read these routes together. They had an observation period and she has a fellow American athlete in the final, potentially reading the boulders with Brooke Rabatou. And I expect all of the athletes will kind of be bringing Annie into the fold with her being so young. It does feel like a, like a family almost out there in some ways. So I do think now Annie knows what she needs to do on that on that move. She might change things up and try and be a bit more dynamic and a bit more committing, less hesitation in the moment. We saw her have a little slip on that first move. Sometimes when your eye, your eyes and your focus is on that later move, it can be possible to slip up a little bit, but she did pull back on and, and get it on the next attempt. So she's in once more to this move. Powerful early on in the women's competition. She's eyeing it up, she's got five points already, wants that ten, sets herself. <laughs> what a swing. A huge backswing with that leg, flicking it up in the air. She hit both holes, the right hand not so well, but the left hand perfectly. Took a huge swing on that hold, and now we see her approaching the last moves. All right, so Annie approaching the top of the boulder. It's worth 25 points, remember. She's adjusting that left hand, moves it around to try to make space for her foot, I think, in that pocket. We know that the hold that she's maybe going up for isn't the best hold. It's positive, but not good enough to swing around on, and she does miss it. There's a small circle on the bigger circle that's got a little lip in it. The intended sequence is for her to reach up slowly to that at the last moment as a hip start to come away from the wall, flicking into the finish where we see the 25 points. That was a great effort for Manny, but you can see it's taking a bit out of her. She's having to stop, have a moment, have a breath, and the clock is starting to tick down. Yeah, almost a minute left for Annie Sanders. The athletes have to finish it before that time runs out. And we've seen a few buzzer beater moments throughout this World Championships, and it always makes such an exciting finish to a boulder round when that happens. Doesn't it just? I love a buzzer beater. <laughs> well, she's in again. She missed that toe a few times. Second time she missed it coming up, and that coordination move can be quite difficult to get every time. Especially when the pressure's on, especially when your mind is just thinking about how to make those corrections on that last move. So she sets up again, swinging that left foot. Huge swing from the left foot. I was really intrigued to see if she would be able to repeat that under pressure. It's a really tricky move, and the way she did it is very, very high risk. So she goes again. She's only got 22 seconds. She's got to be quick here. And this is what we see with this new format. Athletes going right to the very last seconds to try to get the extra points. That match always looks scary when she does it, but she makes it work. Four seconds left. Can Annie do this? It's not going to be enough time. She's up to the pinch. Ah, bit of disappointment there from her. Bit of disappointment, understandably so. She was so close. She could see the 25 points. It was almost in her hands, but not quite for Annie, unfortunately. But there are three boulders still left to go. Coming back to the fact that it is 25 points per boulder, that does really change the way the athletes approach the climbs. Not only that, the way the route setters set the climbs, having to get those two zones in, speaking with the route setters, they're saying it's so much harder and so much mentally and physically to make these boulders work with the two zones. I think they've done an amazing job. The boulders look absolutely great. The start's been incredible, but it does change the way the athletes approach them. And it's so fascinating to watch. And I'll try and pick some bits out that are different. 
Jesse Pills runs onto the stage. He's greeted for the first time by the audience. Hugely popular and such an experienced athlete. Still only 26, which blows my mind. I feel like I've been watching her forever climb out on those mats. I mean, compared to Annie Sanders, you've been watching her for a <laughs> That's decade. A good point, so. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, big difference between those two. And holding that swing without the toe, that's strong. A different approach, really accurate in the hands, showing that Jessie is feeling confident. Yeah, powerful start from her. So she's immediately in, but not scoring points yet. And now she will, as she just swings that body over. Flicks with the leg, crosses over, and she's straight into the high point as well. I said it looked like she was feeling confident, and it's definitely showing wow that was such great work from jesse she is looking like she's on fire right now yeah she's not messing around left hand on the pinch trying to get the feet sorted it's awkward it's blocked and it's no texture on top hit the pocket nearly on the zone but that won't count for the 25 points it won't because she didn't hold it she didn't get those two hands on in control and that is the judge's decision of course she wasn't quite on the hold we know that the second to last hold isn't super positive there is a little lip in there but she can't swing around on it so I, I think for Jessie now she will take some time because that was such a great first attempt I really hope we see her move through that section again and get another attempt at that top move it looks like she's definitely capable of it and I think she'll know that too and you can see her looking at the clock checking the time taking it all in her eyes darting around taking as much information as she can not only does she need to come out Come, and come now and do that last move. She has to repeat everything that she just did. And we know these moves are high risk. Yes, Jessie looks confident, but she had the buzz and the energy of doing that on her first attempt. It's different when you've got to pull on and repeat something with knowledge. It adds the pressure. Yeah, absolutely. And she's got to recover as well between it. I mean, only five, four minutes to go. So four minutes in total. We're coming up to uh, the two minute mark now. Just the difference between that method and Annie's is so interesting to look at. But you were saying, you know, she's got to recover. That method does look more physical. Hits the high zone, gets the score again, but she's already got that to her name, remember? So it's all about just the top of this boulder now. Wow, that's really interesting beta from Jesse there. A little beta break, I think. I don't expect the root setters tried that method. Such great work from Jesse. She is happy with that. She gets that 25 points. She will have a decimal point next to her score because she had those attempts. Each attempt is a minus 0.1. So Jesse is high up on the leaderboard. She jumps up. 24.9 is her score. Followed by Annie Sanders on 9.8 and Jane Kim on 4.9, which actually, for the benefit of us and the audience watching, is a great way to explain the system. We can see it happening there in front of us. Yeah, and suddenly it becomes really obvious just how important it is to go and collect the points. Obviously, it sounds a lot more simple than actually being on the wall and doing it. We saw uh, during the semi-finals, Yanya doing something pretty special. Yeah. Uh, Yanya needed, had so many points in Boulder that she didn't actually have to even climb in lead to get in to the uh, into this final. So Boulder is important. You need to be on the board early on here. It really is, and we've already seen now. So Jessie has more points in Boulder than some of these athletes got total in the semi-final. So it's showing how important a top and a top early is. Obviously, the root setters, they're looking for lots of tops in this round. They want the athletes to get points. They don't want 100 points from all athletes. They want it to be a good competition, of course, and they're creating a show, but they are very aware of that point system and how they are going out to collect points. But yeah, Yanya Garnbrook being in finals without even having to pull on the lead wall is something special. But come on, Yanya Garnbrook is something special. <laughs> she is. She's been on the scene for a while, winning pretty much everything there is to win. But right now we're watching Miho. She crosses over with the right. High with that slotted right foot. Really solid through that start section. Not quite making this jump on her first attempt kind of flicking her feet around, looking a little hesitant. She wants to flick that left leg if she can. That'll help her get her body weight over. She hit the right hand with a really extended arm then, and she hit the left hand a little too shallow, so not all the way into the pocket. That pocket is a jug. These 
all of these women can swing around on it as much as they want to if they hit it properly. If they don't, we'll see what happened to Miho just there. You can see how deep it is. You know, we don't see jugs like that very often in World Cups or World Championships, let alone in a moment like this. So you know how hard that move must be into that hold, into that 10 zone. I guess it shows the importance of root setting because you said big holds on this climb and it's all body position, just making the athletes do strange things up there on the wall. For sure, if there are big holds on the wall, you know those moves between them are not easy. They are big, but not too big for the athletes. Of course, we have shorter athletes making them work and a great stick from Miho there. Yeah, she's gonna do one of those Houdini flips. I think when she adjusts her hand, she's got the right hand in it now, powers up towards the pinch. And that thumb pressing on the no-tech zone, it's slippy. And now we'll see if she's thinking to use the left toe hook, which she does seem to be trying to find. She's kind of figuring it out. You see the weather 10 zone is on that big blue volume. Underneath it, there's a smaller one. And that is to stop the athletes getting a really positive toe hook in. However, there is a slight toe hook on the left. So yes, Jessie used a right toe hook, but it's set to use a left toe hook. And a toe hook is when you put the top of your foot underneath something and try and gain some pressure to alleviate how much weight is going through your arms, making the climb feel a little bit easier. For someone watching at home, that toe hook of Jess's seems obvious to them watching. So, but Miho doesn't know that that's even a possibility. She might not have seen that at all when she's looking at that boulder. Yeah, and if the root setters haven't seen something, I can promise it's not very obvious when you're up there. When we read the boulders with the root setters, they didn't mention that right toe hook. I didn't see it either. Um, not to say that that, <laughs> that means much anymore. I've spent a lot of time on this stage and tend to be able to see most beta, but Jessie just showing her experience and showing how much work she's done coming into this event. We know she's worked on some weaknesses, but all eyes on Miho as she sets up for that 10 zone again. So smooth. What great learning from her to come and repeat that again after some failed attempt and then stick it and stick it again straight away, giving her an attempt on this top. You see as she started to move up, her hips are already shifted and moving to the left. I talk about hips a lot if you're new to watching climbing competitions. Um, where, where a climber's hips go, you can almost be certain that is, that is where they're going to go. So we saw her hips shift to the left. She's pulling on with 20 seconds to go. She's got the 10 points. She's looking for a top here, but she needs to be speedy. Yeah, 10 seconds comes up on the clock now. Miho's going to have to motor. Hits the left, makes the swing work. Five seconds, it's not going to be enough time to do this. And she does drop down, just saving that last bit of energy and skin there. She does, and she heard this beep start. And I think she'll be a little disappointed with that because she knew she was so close. There was so much difference between her first attempt and her last attempt on that climb. You could see she was throwing her leg really aggressively into the movement, making the hips move up high, almost taking her arms and then be weightless for a second. She could hit that pocket so accurately. The difference was huge and it just shows how if you can go confidently into a move, especially a move like this, just how important that is. Well, we're watching a replay of those first few moves. That huge leap over to the left. Our cameraman further or camerawoman further away. No, he's a cameraman further away from the climber than it looks. So never in any danger of getting hit there. So halfway through now, boulder number one. Four athletes have gone, four to go. Brooke Rabatou on next from the USA. And Team USA, I mean, there's a lot of talk about how far they've come in the last couple of years. They have an amazing training facility, but it's the athletes who are making that team. They're pushing each other all the time. They sure are, Team USA gaining an Olympic spot with Emma Hunt's incredible performance last night in speed. If you haven't seen that, do go watch it. It was exciting and eventful. But all of these athletes, we're watching them on stage and we're seeing such a small snippet of what they have done to prepare themselves for this moment. They train relentlessly. There is so much time, effort, preparation, dedication that goes in to this moment. So yeah, it's almost hard to describe how how much this means because because of all that preparation, because of the intensity and everything that surrounds this event. Here we start to get a look of Boulder 2 and that is because this finals is a little bit different. So we will see a, two climbers on the wall next. Our first four climbers have competed on Boulder 1 and then we'll see Jane Kim come out on Boulder 2 and Brooke Rabatou on 
boulder at one. So even more action for you to keep an eye on. And this boulder involves, or potentially involves a move that we've seen before in Innsbruck, the twist on the slab, the turn towards the audience as they rotate through the boulder. It's not the only method, but it is actually the easiest way of doing that climb. And I can't wait to see if they spot that. I can't wait to see if they spot that, but I'm also so fascinated to see how they're gonna move through this slab it's very delicate and then it's a bit more feisty and then delicate again towards the end and i say delicate because they're going to have to be very precise with their foot placements really really smooth through the movements and hold those final positions really perfectly in order to not slip in order to move it's going to be a great watch this slab i think i love slab climbing i think it's going to be really fascinating but also we get double action for the first time in this final so it's going to be a lot going on quite soon. Yeah, this final, different in a few ways, point system and this double method of doing it. But it just means that we can move things along quickly. And also, we just get to check out more climbing, which is good to see. So the next athlete on uh, that blue boulder will be Brooke Rabatou. So she'll be out next. And then uh, Zhang Kim on boulder number two. So on the far left of your wall and your screen. Quite sure what's going on with this pause right now. I would imagine there's people running around behind scenes sorting something out, but we'll uh, let you know if we're updated. But while you're, uh, while we're waiting, we can have a chat about that speed competition last night because there are some things we expect. And uh, well, I'm not going to give it away for people who haven't seen it, but just trust me, go and have a look at it because the athletes you think might get through didn't. The athletes who are uh, wouldn't necessarily perform that well performed out of their skin pressure does crazy things to you i like how you said you weren't going to give much away i feel like you gave quite a bit <laughs> it was a little away hint, there. perhaps <laughs> just some tips if you know speed <laughs> yeah it was a wild night and i want to say a huge thank you to the crowd in burn wow they have been insane we've had over eight thousand spectators at every event or an average of eight thousand the dj seems to be on one when it comes to those really specific moments where the crowd need to get going and you can hear them now it feels like they build throughout around and it's just starting to intensify in here i actually had a word with the dj before this comp and he told me he'd been doing comp since he was 16 on the dj deck so he's super experienced and he's timing the atmospheric music really well isn't he just he's doing a great job yeah huge shout out to the dj so Zhain starting the slab and we saw her do some crazy be uh, beta breaks on the slab during a previous round so she has the potential to see things and Brooke is about to launch on women's one. Straight in for Brooke Rabatou. Brooke looking smooth, looking confident, looking happy. That was a really great start from her straight into that 10 zone. She's up with the left-hand pinch, makes room, changing that right hand into an underclick. I wondered if we see any athlete try and get the foot in the 10 zone, if it was going to be one of them, it was going to be Brooke first, I thought, into that hold that is not a good hold at all, matching the 25. A great start from her. She is looking comfortable. She is karma collected from Brooke. She gets the full 25 points. Jain, well, I said it, she's trying to break this beta. So what we see Jain doing here is she's trying to climb across the footholds that have been put on. She's done it before. We know it can work sometimes. The root setters have actually put a small piece of no texture on the right hand starting hold you can see it it's a little triangle on the far right of the top of the hold the holds that we're looking at here they are dual texture the bottom part being slippery the top part being grippy so what they've done is made an extra little bit of slippery i expect to stop athletes trying to climb across the bottom of the foothold it looks like she might be trying to do that again maybe thinking that the stand-up method wouldn't work for, for her however when she did try that on her first attempt she didn't look very far off it so if this doesn't work, I do hope we get to see her try that stand-up method again. See, why would she go for that bottom method? Because she must know it's uh, footholds, not handholds. Is it not a really risky thing to do in a combined final when we're giving away Olympic tickets? Obviously not to her, I guess. So she's trying that stand-up method again now. What she will have done is when she stood up that first time, how it felt, it didn't feel good enough for her to justify having a second go at that. And the temptation of trying to explore a different method is just too much. The foothold that, that is on the climb, so the yellow hold that's on the black hold next to her, to the right, you can just see there, it is very positive. If she can get her fingers to it, 
she can hold on. So in her mind, that must feel, feel and seem like a more feasible option. However, we see her now trying to stand up again. She's kind of eliminated that as an option in her head, it seems. Her eyes are looking up. You can see she's trying to prep for that big stand up. Maybe not feeling comfortable in the stand or in the catch. It's a really powerful movement. You have to be really precise with the landing position. So you're gaining all the momentum from your legs in the stand-up, and then your hips need to stop at the perfect moment, close into the wall, directly above the feet, and using those thumbs to stand up. She switches the feet in order to shift the hips to the right. A really, really good movement from her, and such great learning and maturity in her ability to figure that out her own way. However, she does only have 50 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, trying those different methods has not given her much time. And this is the move. This is the spin move. She looks like she's spotted it straight away. She's beginning this rotation, but the clock is ticking and she'll be able to see the clock from her angle. And we just got a look at the little jib. So you can see her right hand is starting to crimp something. There's a little tiny screw on hold underneath that. She pivots and turns. That little hold she's reaching down towards is very, very bad. It is terrible. You could see she was twisted up there. So what had happened is she'd stepped her right foot out, left her left foot behind almost, meaning that she still had weight going through it. She needs to take that left foot off to untwist her legs. But unfortunately, I don't think she's going to have time to try that again. No, she's got four seconds on the clock, comes down and falls. And I wanted to talk about height for a second here as Jan Kim says goodbye, because athletes are different heights, of course. And sometimes we see height playing a part and changing the way the athletes do the moves. But I was talking to one of the root setters and I said, look, have you got anyone on your team who's got similar wingspans? And they said, yeah, we have Olga, who's one of the root setters, who does. So all of these moves they've tested to make sure that it's not too reachy for some of the athletes, which is worth remembering because I think when you look, it can be easy just to think about that. And definitely worth discussing. You know, we see Jayan and Brooke on stage right now, two of our shortest athletes. I think Jayan is actually the shortest. And they said... Yeah, so the root setter with the short wingspan, Olga, she, they actually take five centimeters off every move that she can reach, knowing that all the athletes will definitely be able to reach between the holds. So it's not a case of them being too short. There's lots of different factors that come into play. I do think when, when people are watching climbing for the first time, it's like, well, surely taller is better. No, not always. Sometimes, yes, sometimes shorter is better. Climbing is a, is a sport where it's totally dependent on the climb and the athlete. Uh, Oriane Berton is on from France, 3 minutes 41 on the clock. She's young, she has a unique style when she climbs, love watching it, and she's trying to figure out this first sequence. Yeah, this first move I wouldn't expect Oriane to slip up on, but she did on her first attempt. I expect she knows Brooke just flashed, so there's the added pressure on top of her, but she quick, quickly corrected her mistakes. But Let's check out Annie Sanders on the slab as well, because both athletes are making really good progress here. Yeah, she's straight in, not using that dimple down left. Brooke, I mean, uh, Oriane catches the left hand, so she's got those 10 points, and Annie begins this spin, reaching down towards the volume. We know that the boulder on the left, so the slab boulder, is possible without the twist and the pivot, so we may see athletes trying different things. Oriem, meanwhile, she is nearing the top section, but looking to struggle a little bit, looking a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, that left foot sliding on the no-tex. Yeah, as you said, not quite there. Both athletes handle their hips as they look up at the wall. Yeah, smart climbing from both Brooke and Jessie on that first boulder, thinking outside of the box, thinking of creative methods. And when we talk about um, the root setters thinking about shorter climbers, of course they are, but also showing that climbers don't need to climb in the strict method that the root setters have created, that they can go their own way, express their own strengths and also expose their weaknesses sometimes. But Annie here, looking like she's starting to feel a little bit more comfortable on this lab. She's reached down to a tiny little hold. You just saw that yellow hold. It's kind of a mono, minimal nothing, I would say. Yeah, I said it's dimple. basically nothing. <laughs> Yeah, and this move Annie's attempting, I've seen on social media more than any other, this rotation. And it's something that the athletes do is learn movements. And look at this from Annie as she turns to face the crowd. So exciting for them to watch as well. She's going to reach out towards the next series of complicated blocked holds. 
Yeah, so the, the hold just before the 10 that you can see there is a very positive hold, but there are blockers around it to make that move really high risk. She looks so much better and to find a great body position on that spin. So I do hope we see her up there again. She's got enough time. Meanwhile, Orienne back on Boulder 1. She will be really looking for a top pair. Those points are going to be so important. Sliding off that left hand though that time, minute 17 on the clock. Stressful times here as Annie again, she has the uh, right foot in. And with this spin, you'd expect her to do it a little quicker. Now she's got that movement in her body. And just to explain a little squeak that you might have heard there, that is the dual texture, so that, well, the no texture part of the foothold. So as Annie pivoted round, her foot needs to move. Really important in climbing mo almost all of the time to stand on the tips of your toes so that you can pivot when you need to. This is a great example of that. You will see her heel turn so much so that she can move around. Maybe hear that squeak as we just did. Her right heel getting closer and closer to the wall to allow her hips to turn, her knee to start pointing forwards. That's when she can step her foot out. A great save there. She wasn't in a good position. Orion back on the 10 too. Yeah, so look at the scoreboard down on the left. Annie hasn't got this second zone yet. She'd like it to keep in touch. Oriane drives the left foot into the jib, stands up into the pinch. And how will she do this move? But again, popping that right foot. Or well, popping the right foot, she said, not again. A big surprise from Oriane. She. We don't see her fluster often. We don't see her fail on boulders that have been topped by other athletes often. This is the first boulder of the finals. There's pressure on the athletes coming into this, but also after the first boulder, all that information that they've taken in, I expect Orion knows Brooke Flash. There was a huge reaction from the crowd. It's impossible not to hear that when you're behind the wall unless you have some very good noise cancelling headphones, but I've not seen many of those around. So. She's going to have to recompose herself, as is Annie, having not topped either of the first two boulders. So that's the story of the comp so far. Annie's foot shaking there. She put the pressure through it, fell, looking left already towards where she might be going in a minute. And I'm Ori is waiting in the wings. Jessie Biltz is back in action after her good first climb and then I'm Ori there she is always composed she is and she uh, looks at the audience and now the athletes turn and they can begin their time I saw I and I are staying at the ho same hotel so I saw her, see her at breakfast most mornings and I asked her how she was feeling and if she was excited and a huge smile spread across her face it was so good to see and she's really happy about being in this round so Jessie has stood up on the five. Good work from her immediately. Right foot down, and she adjusts it to try to find the right point. It's fairly hard to see, and I straight away into that. And good work from her. And using a slightly different method, but now doing that match, and I loves matching holes like that. Yeah, she is really good at it. And we see Jessie start to do the twist. She's rotating, looking a little bit uncomfortable. You could see she was really bent in the arm, shoulders quite tense. Slabs are always hard to relax into. They are. I feel like this whole comp's been a sort of best of root setting because we've seen <laughs> moves that we watched at the beginning of the season that the athletes have learned and they've put them into the finals and semi-finals and that spin is one of those. And it's one of those things you have to test these athletes. You have to teach them new things. They're just too strong for basic boulders. It does feel like the root setters have been really innovative this season and trying to be as creative as possible. Like you say, they need to test these athletes. They can't just put a basic boulder on the wall anymore because all the athletes are so strong. Here we see Jessie trying to get that foot over and you saw it was a great shot of her wiggling it in. It's blocked, it's awkward to find. And it was really good to see how tricky it is to get the foot really well on the hold and also how uncomfortable it is just in that position. She's very tense in the shoulders again, trying to pivot. We see her hips twist. So now her hips have turned and they're almost parallel with the wall. That should help get the weight through her foot. But her, her heel is still quite far pointed out. So I talked about Annie's knee turning to point towards the camera, whereas Jessie's was pointing to the right there. If she can get that pivot a little bit further, it'll make her feel much more comfortable in that position. So I looking up and left at the high zone, which is waiting there. Now pulls into the starting position, makes the jump, floating through that move. Has a left hand in, gets a high right toe, and then she will bump into the five on the left. 
Most athletes we've seen success on this jump have really swung their leg. So their left leg comes really far backwards and does a huge flick towards where they're going. So that is generating that momentum and pulling the climber across and left. Whereas Aya is not using that big flick with her leg. It's going to be much harder for her to do that. Jessie, clap of her hands. You think she's figured this out, figured something out. Straight back to the chalkboard with that smile on her face, which uh, gives away that the athletes perhaps figured something or seen something in that go. Definitely, and the clap of the hands means a lot. She, she had a fire in her eyes when she looked up after that fall. I think she might know how to do it now. All right, so she has a 40, 53 seconds to get this done. That's the dimple. Somehow she's got two fingers in it. But she's trying a different method. She's crossing through over the foot. We know this is possible. We've been told it's not as easy, but it is the way for Jessie. Great climbing from her that she's able to figure that out. As she's on that stage, it's not an easy thing to do, but finding your own method is the exact thing you need to do in that moment. Can she stick the 25? That's massive for Jessie. I mean, look at her score jump in a sec. And remember, every score point they get here is added to that lead. The further they can get up that scoreboard on bold, the less work they have to do in lead later on. It's so important as a progression. You say the less work, but they still have to put the work in on lead. Come on. The less pressure, maybe? The less pressure, <laughs> maybe? I don't know. But these athletes need all the points they can get with the Olympic tickets on the line. I walked off. She's got her head down a little bit. Three more boulders still to go, but it's not going to be easy because suddenly it's not about where you finish. It's not about what position you finish in after this. It's really very much about the points. Yeah, we saw a fall from I there. A nasty one. I think she's okay. She got up and walked away, but uh, a bit of a moment for her early on in the comp. Now, the lady running on will be familiar to you if you are an old hand at comp climbing. If you're new to comp climbing, well, she's simply one of the best in the world, if not the best, and I'm standing on the fence with that one because I'm trying to stay neutral. The Yanya Garmbra has had a heck of a competition so far. She cruised to a boulder victory. Second in lead, but watch this woman on a boulder wall. But will pressure start to play its part in Yanya Garmbra's psychology? We know she's human, and this is a huge moment for the Slovenian athlete. It sure is, but she's looking comfortable. She's looking happy. We were told that some of the athletes might be strong enough to do this statically. If you were going to put money on one doing it, it'd be Yanya Gambra. And she is looking smooth right now, as is Miho Nanaka. Yeah, such confidence at the moment from both women. But Yanya reaches up, holds the dish. What finger strength to stick that. That's almost impossible to hold that move. We saw the foot slip, we saw her hold the hold we were told is impossible to hold without going quickly, but Yanya Gamba does it. Meanwhile on the slab, Miho into the tent, I believe on her first attempt. This is really good climbing, not opting for the spin, committing to her method that she knew would work on her first attempt, but we know this last move is way harder than Jessie made it look. It's easy to slip up, Miho starting to go static. It's supposed to be a big dynamic stand up into a really precise position. Hopefully she sticks it. She's going to stand, reach the bottom foot, not leaving the hold. She needs to stand up and onto that right foot. The hips were too low. We need more power from that lower leg to get her up onto the right leg and then a really precarious position to finish. That was a great first attempt and she's still got so much time on the clock. So yeah. I think Miho can do this. I really hope we see her attempt that last hold and find that right position. So two minutes 17 on the clock. Miho Nanaka sitting in fourth at the moment, 19.8. Jesse Piltz, 49.6. I'm reading these scores, but of course, they will change a lot with two boulders to go and athletes have yet to climb on boulder number two. Boulder number one is done now. Yanya Gambra was the last athlete there, so we say goodbye to that. And plenty we'll of climbing ahead. Yeah, next rotation we'll see Jane Kim come out on Boulder 3. Meanwhile, all eyes on the stage. Miho Nanaka gets a stage to herself on Boulder 2. She's posted on Instagram that she is so stoked to be here to push to her limits on the wall once again. Let's do it. So, <laughs> here you are, Miho. We want to see it. We do. Now's the moment to shine. One minute, 34 left. Into that dimple. Two fingers pinching it. Different to Jessie. She's gone for a foot swap. 
we know that hold is blocked. We know how hard that foot swap is holding the dimple, making it look like a good hold. There is nothing there at all, but really smooth climbing from Miho. Yeah, the setter said you have to have strong feet to do it like that. What's her feet like for this move? She needs to stand up high into the final. She pops that foot, comes down. Still a minute left, though. Still got time. Yeah, still a minute left. I wanted to see her definitely have a good go at that move. A minute does feel like enough time for her to get through it, and I think she thinks so too, because she's very casual, she's brushing the holes, she seems really composed, the clock is ticking down. Come on, Miho, get on the wall. 46 seconds now, she brings the right foot. This press, easy now for her, thumbs in action. Let's see if she does the foot swap again. Has the right foot drilled into it, into the dimple. Watch that left foot. It's risky, but she makes it work and kicking over to the right to stop the fall. Hits the 10. Remember, she already has that. It's just the top needed. And you can see how bad that foot is, just that jib in a no-tech zone. Yeah, it's really tiny and she has to stand up really tall. She swings out. What we saw Jessie do, she hit that hole. She brought her other hand up really quickly, flipped the right to compress between her hands. Miha went up one hand, her left arm started peeling. Her body weight just pulling her away, away, away from the wall. And unfortunately for Miho, she had 25 points in her hand, but she doesn't get to collect them. So close. I love the way you described that. You've said it before, 25 points in her hand. Needs to match, though, to get the points. Now, let's watch Yanya again, because she did this pretty quick, that Houdini flip. And that replay doesn't show how hard she had to hold the right hand. Such finger strength. Also, the fact that she slipped, she didn't fluster, she didn't worry, she calmed down, actually straightening her arm, so fingers working a little. Oh. Fingers working a little there, but also she was in a great position to hold it because her reactions are so fast. Um, I mean, we talk a lot about Yanya. Someone said it sounds like she's your favorite. I feel like it's hard not to have Yanya as a favorite. Of course, we don't have favorites, but she and Brooke both have 25 points on the board right now, currently looking in a really good position. Yes, they're in second and third, but they still have another boulder to go. And this is boulder number three we're looking at here, and it's the powerful one of the set, perhaps. Big moves between slopey holds, and when myself and Sean were out there on the mats earlier on, you could feel the heat, and I'm, I'm concerned about friction. I'm just putting it out there. But a start underneath on a good hold, and then a big moves out. Very big moves, really powerful. We say big moves, maybe not that far apart, but where you're coming from, their moves are gonna feel huge. We know the ending is incredibly physical too. Very bicep -y actually. Shoulders and beef through the middle, and then bicep -y at the end. It looks like a battle to get the 25 on this. And it's through the steepest part of the wall as well. 60 degrees in the middle there which is incredible. Right, so Brooke runs all the way to the end. I'd love to see what's in Brooke's bag. I know she's got many things in there. The athletes are allowed to carry on certain items. It's pretty personal what they carry on. And then Jane Kim on women's number three. I'm sure Brooke could tell you if you asked her. Do you reckon she's, she would? Yeah, definitely. Oh, she's I lovely. Have word. I've always <laughs> wondered. I've just, I've just always felt a bit embarrassed to ask. For anyone wondering what might be in there, she's not got a load of secrets. It'll probably be a different set of shoes, some mortar, liquid chalk, tape in case she starts bleeding. Um, yeah, nothing too suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not implying she's cheeky. Please don't get me wrong there. <laughs> All right, Jeanne jumps up. She hits that left hand, but now you can see the big move we were talking about to launch outwards on a steep bit of wall. And Brooke, again, all of them have spotted this twist as a possibility, and they're trying it. You say that, but Miho straight into the other method, not to pull you no, up. No, 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 you're right. You're totally right. We didn't see Miho try that, which I thought was really impressive from her to commit to that. I They've read this route together. We saw them on the mats twisting around, so we know they all know it's a possibility. Brooke now thinking something different, stepping down. That will work for Brooke if she can be accurate with that right hand. Yes, in it's an attempt, right? She's going to get minus 0.1, but that point system means that attempts suddenly don't feel like they mean as much compared to a normal boulder competition. So she's got a lot of attempts to gain that 25. Now knows a method that will work. I think we'll see her try that again, if I'm honest, because she was very close to hitting it. 
I thought she was going to try something different <laughs> then and prove me wrong, but she doesn't. She hits it way better, straight into that hold and smoothly into this last move. All eyes on Brooke as she sets up for this big last move. Yeah, it's a long way up there. So she sets, powers through the right, and this time holds it. What is Brooke Rabbit doing at the moment? And Jane Kim as well. So she hit the toe hook, which is actually what the root set is intended. Jesse doing it slightly different. Brooke catching a left toe, smart climbing from her, quick to realize. And Jai and Kim suddenly looking like she's getting involved in this boulder number three. Yeah, she wraps her hands around it. Maximum skin, if possible. And then she will rotate the feet if she can, dropping back down to those first massive ball that's been screwed onto the wall. Presses with the right hand. And look at that foot camming against the wall and the hole, trying to find some friction and purchase there. Oh, my skin is aching watching this as she slides down. Oh, <laughs> that looked like a good fight, and she looks tired from that attempt. You can see her breathing heavy. Yeah, sweat standing out for sure out there. It's warm, it's a physical, thuggy boulder, and one you don't want to try too many times. And look at her puffing out those cheeks. Jane wrote some really beautiful words on her Instagram, actually talking about the thing that she couldn't expect becoming a reality. She truly wanted to do and accomplish tomorrow in finals. Is getting an Olympic ticket, but it feels like a miracle, but giving her best to enjoy the climb without any regrets. I love that. Well, we never know what might happen. Miracles can occur here. So she's got the left foot both feet now and look at this move high above her head just using it to adjust feet first and a clever adjustment from that first go when she was jumping out you can see here she's got her right foot hooked on the volume she's got a heel hook and then she cammed it in and then she changes it to a toe she's so good at adjusting her body and what she how she uses her hands and her feet really wise in her movements and really technical in her ability to use her feet to keep her on the wall but this this climb is proving way too physical for her today she gets a big reaction as she says goodbye not too many points on the board yet. She'd want something out of that final bowl that needs a top, really, to add to that score. And the brushes come on. Our volunteers, and big thank you to the volunteers for all your work. We've got a video coming on the World Climbing Club, uh, which is our daily show. We're on show number 11 now, which is uh, crazy to think of. So go and check that out for highlights, behind the scene content, interviews, and more. That's on the IFSC YouTube channel, so subscribe while you're there. And Lorianne Berton runs on. She'll want something better out of Boulder 2, as will Andy Sanders on Boulder 3. Yeah, both athletes not getting many points on the board right now. I do wonder whether they're going to be feeling more pressured because they haven't had a good start or whether they're going to be more fierce and feisty because they know these points matter. It can go either way, and we will see as they pull onto these climbs now. So Orient's up into the five, first time of asking. Drops down to the foot. I can't wait to see which method she'll think of. Will it be the twist? Will it be the foot swap? It's not going to be the twist, and we know that because she's swapped her hands around. So her first, or what she's going to try first, will be staying in close. Now we see her go back, and now we see her change her <laughs> mind again. She's being indecisive on the wall, but making, trying different things and doing it very quickly, not wasting energy. She opted for the same method as Brooke there, quite quick, a step through with her foot, not swapping her feet and trying to reach down to that 10. I expect she'll try that again because she didn't look too far off. So that's Oriane's thinking process. She might have figured something out here. Annie Sanders, meanwhile, hits the big hold. Let's watch Oriane, see what adjustments she makes to this. We saw her try it both ways. She's got plenty of time, 2.45 on the clock. Annie gets a left heel as well. And Oriane in, good finger strength to drop into that hold. Great accuracy, really good finger strength, like you say. And quickly back on the wall. She didn't take long to rest and reset at all. No, Oriane needs points. And she's not going to get it with that time. Missed the left pinch. And look, we keep talking about you have to hit it with two hands, but you need to show control as well. So 
With the two hands, if you hit the ha left hand really high and flip the right like Jessie did, yes, that'll work. But if she catches the toe hook, she only needs one hand just like Brooke. The intended method is to hit just one hand and catch the toe hook. Annie Sanders, meanwhile, the first athlete we see hitting the five. So the second athlete on the climb, Jane Kim not getting quite through the start. But Annie looking strong right now, but starting to seem like she's having to fight to just stay on the wall because those holes there, they are really bad. They are not in cut in the slightest. They are slopey open pinches and your thumb is on the no texture part of the holes are really slippery. Oh, Brooke drops down again into the finger move. Sorry, Orian, does it Brooke then? Goodness me, my brain's melting. Orian gets the right foot up, stands. Can she hit it this time? Adjust with the right hand. That's the match on the control. That right hand adjustment was crazy to watch. It was. You saw she hit the right hand. She started to swing out. She bumped again with the right hand. No toe hook needed. No match needed because she had a really good hold on the top of that volume. Smart climbing from her in a high pressure environment where she had to make very quick decisions in order to get those points. These points are so important. Cop number of attempts to top suddenly feels like it goes out the window a little bit because it's all about getting points on the board. And points on the board is what Annie Sanders is trying to do here but this boulder the most powerful and it will be draining all of her energy as she goes again on it. It's long as well. It really is. It's long, it's physical, it is powerful. It's going to be zapping them. And there's a lead route to go, not very long, so the athletes need to be really clever about how they manage their energy out here. And Nanny drops down. With 30 seconds to go, she's got this tricky decision to make, and I think she's going to leave, which is probably wise, because she's probably got as much as she could have out of that boulder. Yeah. It's hard to walk away with time on the clock, but on a boulder like that, it is the right decision. Only 16 years old and making incredibly mature decisions out on the mat. So our Brusher team assemble, running on, as we'll watch some of the replays from Oriane's attempt earlier on. That was the move I said required finger strength, and you can see the fingers in almost a 90 degree angle. And this was the big bump match to the top of the hold, brought the left in, showed control, and a top for Oriane. I'm just gonna pull myself up because I said that attempts suddenly seem like they don't matter too much, but if we look at the scores, you can look on your app if you have it, there is a very little separation between Jesse and Oriane right now, and if they were to finished the round with the score, of course there's more climbing to go so those scores will change. But if they fell on the same point in the lead route, suddenly those attempts become really significant. So yeah, the attempts are really important. <laughs> Every go might count, we don't know. And this is the thing, we're sort of trying to predict the future here a little bit as we look ahead to the lead. And Jesse has a toe in and now a heel and Imori on the slab, straight up into that press. And as we said, that move, may, Jain made it look quite reachy, quite a long way away, but I, with some power, moves up towards it, finds the press quickly. And also landing in a really solid position. Slabs are often about the position that you end in. Yes, you need the power and the strength to stand into that position, but where you land is really important. Now, Jesse is making good progress early on here, which I think is important on a power boulder like this, because as we saw, the more attempts start to drain you, she makes the match and she's one move away from the high zone. Gets it with the left and gets that crowd reaction to make sure the scoring drops back down. But she, she has been awarded down. it. She's awarded the 10 because she did an adjustment on it. You saw her grab it, bump again, move her body slightly. Therefore, she has the 10 in her pocket. Oh, try hard face when she goes down. But that high zone, that adjustment, like you said, could be vital here. It is. And then we see I nearing the 10 on boulder number two as well. Great from her, seeing her drop that on her first attempt and then be so much more accurate on the second. She's got one move to go to get to the 25, but we know she needs to stick it. She doesn't. She's, there's a huge barn door, so her left leg was swinging round and round and round and round, ultimately ripping her off the wall. She couldn't bring it back in. There was not very much for her to hold on to. Brooke, we saw catch a toe hook. We've seen a 
two hands on the hold to match. We've seen a right hand bump again. I need to do something different on that next attempt. Otherwise, she's going to feel the same swing that she just did. And I think she knows how to do it because she's pulling on really quickly, not resting a lot at all. No, she's not, is she? Oh, well, that's the action going on here. A minute 45 on the clock. You can see the lead wall in the background. And I chalking up as she starts the journey towards the right. Adjusts with the feet. Drops down to the slab, making that move look casual. Really impressive that she's able to repeat that move after dropping it on her first attempt. Learning very, very quickly and being able to repeat it is so crucial. A right, big press up now, hits the match and holds the swing the second time of holds asking. The, holds the swing, her hips were so much closer to the wall. They were right above her foot, allowing her to put more tension through the hand and control that swing. The left leg coming nowhere near as far round. Great climbing from I, and she needed those points after not the star she would have wanted on boulder one. It's amazing the contrast as well with these uh, two bold at the same time. As I leaves with joy, Jess's face serious with 50 seconds to go on the other side of the wall. And we know this is the hardest boulder of the round. We've been told by the root setters and we've stood up there and we've looked at them. It looks like the hardest boulder of the round too. So Jess is saying goodbye 36. That shows how powerful it is, but she's on 59.6. And Shauna, similar rules I think to uh, the normal boulder finals, they'll, they'll get to see the results between boulders. I'm asking this and I don't actually know, it was a silly thing to ask, but... I don't know the answer to that either, I'm going to be totally honest. I don't know with the way that this new system works. I expect not because we've got so much action going on. There are two isolation zones and in a normal boulder final you move between the two isolation zones, but with everything that's going on, I expect not actually. I should know and I'm sorry, I will go find out in the break if that's the case because it can change things and usually during a final they, they do get to see the scores so they have an idea of what's going on, so we'll discover that. One thing I want to point out, we've talked about the fact that the athletes are going to be saving energy, so walking away quite early on the third one we've seen, but also what we haven't spoken about is skin management. So in climbing, our fingertips get absolutely shredded. And people will maybe have felt that in a normal gym situation. When in a competition, we see a, a lot of athletes actually bleeding from their fingertips because they leave it all out there. They try harder than you could ever imagine. So that is maybe another reason we're seeing athletes walk away with time on the clock on Boulder 3. Yeah, good point. Different than that semi-finals where it was split between days. All right, so Yanya is in on the slab. Miho takes a fall on Boulder 3. Let's see which method Yanya uses here. She's into the dimple. Goes back down, looks like she's adjusting for the, the pivot, but then changes her mind. Yeah, she seems maybe not sure, and there are different options. She knows this boulder's been topped. I expect she will anyway, because she'll have heard the reaction from the crowd. We do hear the little squeak every now and then from her shoe moving around. She commits to the cross through with the foot, sticking that hold first time. She is so incredibly accurate, and we'll see her now on the top move as she steps her right foot up and starts to set up. Miho falls. Yanya's standing though, she's one move away. But that slip, we've seen it a few times. A left foot slip, she hit the ground, turned to the brushes immediately, asking for a brush. They will clean the holds. The reason they brush is to remove any excess chalk and rubber that might be on the holds. So Yanya's asked for that and she'll compose herself before her next attempt. Miho also doing the same after trying to get involved on this very physical boulder and yet to put any points on the board on women's three. And then he goes again, two minutes 18 on the clock. Miho upside down, such a powerful climber as well. She likes a move like this. But much better from Miho, hits the five. She'll have those points now, obviously with some minus points. And Yanya again sticking the 10, about to set up for that final move. She'll be much more precise and considered in her attempt, I expect, this time. Her brain and thoughts thinking about the feet this time. Misses the 10, though, but Yanya's in on the left. She gets the points, minus the attempt points, of course, but a smile on her face, and that it's two out of two for Yanya Garnbrett joining Brooke Rabatou on that 49.9 score. 
I talk about hips a lot, and Yanya's hips were so perfect when she hit that top hold. Slightly to the left, because they were above the foot, which meant that her hands could perfectly hit exactly where she intended. There was no movement once she hit where her hands wanted to be. Getting the points in the bag. So Miho is left alone. At women's bowl at, uh, bowl at three proved pretty difficult here. No one getting it at the moment. Miho is resting, which is smart. She knows the sequence, or thinks she does, and with a minute to go, the athletes do not have a lot of attempts in them on this boulder. Lena Drabella in the background there. One of our IFSC photographers. Do go and check out their hard work. They're up to two in the morning last night with a parrot and speed. Wonderful photos of these athletes who are climbing right now. Miho launches out once more. This boulder looks so burly. Really, you're having to wrestle and fight through this lower section where the wall is so incredibly steep. And then it doesn't let up as you near this upper section. These long holds, they are not in cut, they are not positive. You are just hanging and squeezing as hard as you can, having to use your feet to pull your hips so close to the wall. As we can see here from Miho, she gets the 10, she starts moving upwards. But this next move where she just came off, we know is one of the hardest moves probably the hardest move on the climb. Yeah, that's where she was trying to get to. So, <laughs> she leaves the stage. And yeah, see some signs out the background. Those volunteers, all week, they've been holding up athletes' names with those uh, white letters. Let's see Yanya, that was the first fall. Coming down, popping that foot, and immediately she was looking back at that hold again, accusingly, second time, absolutely nailed it. She gets the maximum points, minus the attempts. So let's try to keep updated with our scores, if we can. And remember, this is hard to see because we're on different stages of this boulder competition with athletes climbing multiple boulders at the same time. At that moment, Jessica Biltz, 59.6. Yanya and Brooke, 49.9. So they have uh, climbed both of the first two boulders. Then Orian, I'm Ori, Miho Nanaka, Anastasia Sanders, and Jain Kim are our top eight. We've seen all athletes on two boulders, so this final is progressing. It's getting exciting, and we are learning more and more just how important these points are. We'll have a little pause in proceedings here to allow us all to catch our breath, and I just want to let you know what's happening in the stadium, uh, because being interviewed right now and hopefully we can uh, get a shot of that um, yeah, Petra Klinger is in the auditorium getting interviewed in the background I wanted to mention it although she's not on your screen because she's such a legend sort of saying goodbye a little bit from competition climbing although she will carry on with the Olympics. This was her last world champs, and what a place to do it at her home stadium. It is her last world champion. She's already an Olympian, and she is hoping for an Olympic ticket again. She will continue that journey in hopes to qualify. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see her in the lead and boulder here, but she is working hard towards the other qualification opportunities. But yes, saying goodbye to the world championships and starting to near the end of her competition career. It was a beautiful moment in the crowd as the crowd stood up, clapped her, a previous world champion. She has done so much for climbing in Switzerland and I expect a huge reason and part of why we are here for this world championships in Bern and Switzerland have welcomed this event and Bern has welcomed this event with open arms. It has been a incredibly amazing show. So much support from the Swiss climbing community and beyond. I'm going to be sad to see the end of this, but there is still a long way to go. <laughs> yeah, we're not done yet. The men's final tomorrow. And we're watching the shots from earlier on in this boulder final. And Yanya Gamba there topping out the boulder in some style. She gets it done. Well, we're looking at women's number four for the first time. And as is the pattern with all these boulders, it's long and complicated. And part of that is these two zones we keep talking about. I'm really liking the two zones. I like the fact that they are tricky and making the climbers climb differently.
Well, if you're just joining us, welcome to Burn for the Boulder and Lead finals for the women. Here we give away some of our Olympic places. The top three, the podium finishes, will get a ticket and a medal along the way, of course. And we're just looking at women's four. And Shauna, we were just saying, it, it's we're liking the zones, the way they're set up. I can't believe we're on Boulder four already. <laughs> it's about to get underway. We will see athletes climbing on Boulder three as well. We have our four remaining athletes to climb on Boulder three and all eight athletes still yet to climb on Boulder four. So we see Jayan Kim and Brooke Rabadou on your screen right now. But yeah, the, the two zones, it feels like it's changed bouldering. And in my opinion, I like it. I think it's great. It's great to watch. It gives a little bit more away. Much easier to see what's going on on the wall with the very obvious zones and point system. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I agree with you. I'm a big fan of this format. Well, Brooke Rabatou is straight away up and in, and she's having a brilliant finals, a real fire and determination in her eyes this evening. In the background, Jane Kim on women's three. And Brooke, powerful moves to start off with as she goes towards that number five. She's looking for a knee with that right. I think she's, maybe she has got it in. Yeah, she's pressing her knee next to her hands, and that's just to aid her hands, take a little bit of weight off her arms a little bit as she chalked up. Interestingly, she's chalking up on this climb in that roof over 60 degrees steep. It's really impressive from her. Brooke is very good at using her heels, using her flexibility. You can see how open her hip is there, how far her knee is turned out, and her ankle is turned into the wall really, really Really impressive climbing. She gets a high foot. She hasn't yet got the 10. If she can get it like she is right now, she's in a much better position for this next move. She needs to stand up tall, hit that right hand, and be very, very solid in the bicep. But we saw a foot slip. Now, I asked a question I didn't know the answer to earlier on, and I found the answer to it. So in a normal finals, you do see the scores after each boulder. Here, you find it out after the boulder round. So the athletes will have an idea at the end of this round where they stand so they can set themselves up for lead. So there you go, I've answered my own question. Thank you very much. So Jeanne is on women's four here. She's uh, looking upwards, jumps into the starting press position. Swings that left around, all but kicking into the wall to stop that swing. Yeah, it's a good hold that she's going for, but she did need to commit to it really, really decisively. And we see her do a paddle now, which is where you jump to a hold and continue that movement through it. A really close effort from her, though. Maybe not getting quite enough height, but not far off at all. Definitely possible for Jayan. I hope we get to see her up there again. Brooke Rabatou shaking those arms. That's a movement she does all the time, and it's, it's like I think I could see that from a silhouette of Brooke and know it's Brooke. He's got that chalk bag in as well to chalk up, as you said, mid move, which is crazy on something so powerful. Up she goes with the left, and I love the way she brings that right foot up to stop the movement. Yeah, very, very fast movements from Brooke, smart climbing. She, like I said, is really good at using everything that she's got, as well as I mentioned that about Giant earlier. This boulder really, showing the climbers strengths, the ones who are able to get into positions that work for them, use their knees, use their heels, open their hips, and make these moves easier. Definitely not easy, because they are not by any means easy. For sure, and she's got a minute to do this now. Brings up the left, bumps it around. Now locks in a heel on the first zone hold. Look at this shaking up once more from Brooke. It is warm out there with the lights and the crowd. Gets the left foot in, now aiming for the next zone. This is the hardest move, potentially, on the entire set. She was close to that. She stood so tall, she knew exactly what she wanted to do. Jahan Kim also really close to sticking that paddle, just missing it. She knows that it's possible for her. We see her pulling back off with not a lot of time left on the clock. So much action on the stage right now. It's all go. Brooke Rabbit who leaves. Jahan Kim spins down, and she will say goodbye. And that's her last boulder done. It's uh, It's gone quickly here. So Jeanne says goodbye. No tops for her, but zones along the way. And she, look at that, uh, what is that? A flip-flop shoe combo as she walks off. Uh, smiling at the crowd, or I think we're smiling back. Got to keep your shoes clean. You've got to, haven't you? It is important. Maybe smile there. And that is our crowd as we pivot through the stadium. Thank you to everyone who's come out to support the athletes all the way through this comp. Watching Brooke Rabatou there, the light shines on her. 
slapped up. That's the hard move, Shauna. It's a real thuggy one. It really is so much to the biceps. It's going to be a move that you have to stand really tall into. But if you start to stand tall, you start to lose that bottom hand. So it needs to be a smooth transition between the two holds. So Annie Sanders comes on for her final bowler. Oriane Baton is in action on women's number three. Three minutes 53 on the clock, and I hope you're keeping up at home. This is very intense here in the stadium. Let me just tell you, the atmosphere in here is crazy. And not this sort of silent sort of tension that we've sometimes seen. Everyone is just, I'm walking around, leaning forward in their seat and screaming at the stage. Marianne trying to find that knee that we saw Brooke use so well to chalk up on. Really great use of her heels, her flexibility, twisting and turning to get everything she can out of her feet. A hard foot move as she gets the foot nice and high and making the move to the 10 harder but in a better position for this next move here. She didn't quite stand up high enough. I think she maybe needs to release the heel a little earlier. A huge stand up for that move but not a bad effort especially for her first attempt and with so much time on the clock we may see her take a big rest now before her second attempt because that is a physical boulder. Yeah, and skin you've got to save as well. Remember that boulder is skin intensive. There's a whole lead wall to come and another boulder for Oriane. Keep an eye on those scores on the left as well. But Rabatou leading the way. Jesse Pilch, Janja Garnbrett, just to give you an idea of where we're at, because uh, as we keep saying, there's two boulders in action at the moment. And I think some surprises in the round already with Oriane not topping the first boulder. And also she's now on the third boulder. She's going to be looking for that 25. But right now we see Annie Sanders setting up for this paddle jump. She did attempt it before and was relatively close. She's getting the hand over, but her body is so far out from the wall. If she can get closer to the wall, that'll make the sticking of the second hold much easier because it's very slopey. It is, and a minute 55. The athletes can see those clocks as well as the audience and you watching at home. And they do keep an eye on it regularly. In fact, our cameramen tend to stand behind them to get that shot of the athletes looking into the lens we love so much. <laughs> Just to give you a bit of behind the scenes action there. Oriane is doing what Ariane does. And Annie Sander, I think, took some tape off there, potentially, off her finger, if I caught that right. So athletes may tape the ends of their fingertips to conserve skin as well. Yes, this is the final boulder of the round, but there is a lead route to come. So much more climbing for these women and most of them really enjoying a lead rope and will be pushing to the absolute max. We know Annie is not a specialist in either discipline because she is a specialist in both. <laughs> Ariane is up, hits that right foot. She's rested for a while before attempting this one. And we're coming up to the minute mark on this round. Drops down and under. Finds the right foot, hits the knee. She's got the reach to do it with the knee in as well, without the adjustment. Climbing much quicker on this attempt. She knows the hole, she knows how they feel, and the body positions that she needs to find to make these moves work. Annie really close on the paddle there, and Oriane stepping that foot up. She's going to reach up into the 10. We'll see her try and stand as high as she possibly can, but we don't see it because of a foot pop. That was so unfortunate. Yeah, clever use of the knee there. She was rocking up as well. Annie's going, though, still. 22 seconds on the clock. The one, two, spins down. And she's, I think she's going to go again, maybe. She's certainly thinking about it. Why not? Last boulder. Pressing into the roof, jumping into the five. Ten seconds to go, but a long way to the next high zone. And almost for a brief moment, it looked like she might stick it. You saw kind of her hips stop moving. It looked like she might be able to do it. Hopefully she's able to let the frustration of that go. She'll have some time to process it before the lead route, but a close call for her. She really nearly did stick that. Okay, well, as our logo spins, we'll see a replay of Oriane here. She had the heel locked in. That was her coming down into the light on the front of the stage. Annie Sanders up with the hands and lots of spins like that. Rotating through the air as she fell. 
Getting closer and closer, but running out of time eventually. And her comp done for the time being for the boulder. Her score locked in for the boulder. Hi, Mori joins us. Four minutes on the clock, and Jesse Pilts as well is having a great round here. I've had a lot of questions, uh, well, I've had a lot of questions generally, but one of them has been about foot pops and why that happens. And there are a number of different reasons. It may be that the holds are dirty. We saw when Yanya's foot popped earlier, she asked for a brush straight, straight away. We do see carpet on the mat here, which is important to note. A lot of climbing gyms don't have that, so it does help the shoes stay a lot cleaner. But one reason it can also be that the athlete loses concentration and doesn't put the right amount of pressure. Sometimes athletes put too much pressure or not enough. There are many different reasons for foot, foot pops, but just thought I'd give a few of them there. <laughs> exactly, Sean has got questions on her Instagram, so you can go and check those out if you want to ask comp questions. She has got quite a few of them, so I'm sure she will uh, attempt to get to your question, especially if there's multiple questions on the same topic. Yeah, I'm trying to cover them generally as we speak and not just pull out specific ones. Don't want to take eyes off the action, that's for sure. As I hit the 10 on Boulder 3, this is a powerful climb, but she is looking really comfortable here. But can she make the next move? She started to try and swap her feet, which is going to be really difficult on holds like that because they're so slopey. Doesn't allow for much movement in the body because you want to be in the perfect position to make them halt, make you stay on the wall there. I said Jess is having a great round. It surely is. Two tops and a high zone so far. But not managing to get the five yet on this climb. A surprise from Jessie after we've seen her absolutely smash it on very dynamic boulders. She's talked about the fact that she's been working on it on Instagram. She's shown that she's really, really fighting on her weaknesses to improve and improve. She's not looking comfortable here, but she's got time on the clock to figure it out. And we know it doesn't matter how late she hits these zones. It's all really important points. Yes, attempts do matter, but we see her hit the five zone now and set up for the paddle. We know that she's capable of doing paddles. She just needs to stay calm and collected and get her body in the right position. But coming down hard though. Yeah, she did, similar kind of style to Annie struggling on that move. Now in terms of weakness, the root setters have quite specific guidelines on these boulders. They're meant to set a range of different styles. And that's the, uh, the volunteers I was talking about earlier with the names of the athletes there. Yeah, so different styles on the wall. And I really like that because it tests everything and it also allows athletes to shine in different areas. Yeah, we talked about the fact that it showcases their strengths, but it also exposes weaknesses, like we've said. The root setters have done a great job at setting a range of styles throughout these climbs. I think they've done a really excellent job throughout this entire competition. Jesse sticking the paddle with the first time we've seen that. Her hand hit that hold, it was not coming off this time. Nearing the 10 zone, she gets it. And now she gets the most exciting move of this climb with multiple different ways to do it. Let's see what she can do with this last move. Out she goes towards the final hold, hits it with the left. She's taken a while to do that move though. She's going to have to get it next go with 46 seconds on the clock. Aimori once more heading towards the high zone on her climb. And it's all that climbing for Jessie to get to a move like that. She, if she wants to try it again, she still has to go all the way through those bottom moves, which we know are high risk moves. Aimori with a try hard face. Oh, so much power slides off. And we have microphones behind the wall. You could hear the skin leave the hold there with a swoosh as she came down. And Jessie as well leaves us with 14 seconds. So Jessie's comp is done, but with a 69, that's a good score for Jessie. I do think it is a good score. We know that she's very, very, very capable on a lead wall, previous lead world champion. So that could definitely be an interesting round for Jessie. So it's starting to take shape now, the final points. The brush is cleaning the holds. Let's see some replays of this then. This was I'm Mori. Leaping out. Did really well with this power boulder. Two fingers there on the intermediate. And this was Jesse holding the swing, kicking the leg back in. And that was the final move to the last hold. But no send for her. So Yanni Garnbet runs onto the mat. Mihonanaka joins her. 
And Yana takes a second to familiarize herself. The athletes read these routes off camera. We showed a bit of a replay of them reading it earlier on. Shoulder removes to start with, encompassing through. And we know Yanya loves a hard border, so hopefully she'll be satisfied with this one. She thugs it out towards the five, gets the heel in, pushes the toe on the wall. Miho as well hits the food, gets the shout in the background. There she is. Both athletes making really quick progress on their first attempt and into the cruxes of both lines at the same time. Watch both screens if you can, because Yanya sticks the undercut into the 25, the only athlete to do so on Boulder 3, as Miho sets up for the last move on Boulder 4. It was all action right then. <laughs> it was, we almost saw it. simultaneous tops. Yeah, Yanya goes. I had someone ask me earlier, they were like, isn't it hard to describe these boulders because everyone else makes it look difficult. Yanya comes on and flashes it. How do you describe that? And I just said, look, you can't sometimes with her. It's just who she is and it's what she does out there. It's, it's incredible to watch. Statistically, the most successful, impressive athlete of all time. She doesn't get the credit she deserves. She has just come out and flashed all three boulders. That means she has 75 points. And we've always wondered since this system was invented, since this scoring system was put in place, will we ever see a 200? Yeah, that is the magic number, isn't it? It will happen one day, it will. And just coming back to that, there are 100 points for boulder available, 25 per boulder, and then 100 points for topping the lead route. That is how a magical 200 would happen. But right now we see Miho with a very different method there and really, really cool to stick that yeah, she had the toe in underneath. Now she sets herself up for this move. Brings the left foot back, kicking. Crowd getting behind her. She steadies once more. Big swing, holds it with the 25. And head in her hands. Miho, wow. She gave it everything on that go. She did. You could see what that means to her. 25 points, minus a few decimal points because of the attempt. But what a moment, the crowd were loving it, we were loving it. She threw straight to the finishing hole, missing the bump again, and holding the swing with a foot plant. That was such strong, confident, decisive climbing from her. She deserved that moment. She did, I think she was emotional because she needed that climb. So she's up on the scoreboard now with a 54.4 for Miho Nanaka. And you can see the uh, sign people immediately holding up their signs and celebrating with her as we rotate through into the next round. I think emotional because she needed it, but also that must have felt so good. That boulder looks like one of those that if you stick it, get all the movements right, it's going to feel incredible when you hit that finishing hold. It really is. Well, there it is. Confirmation of it. 54.4 for Miho Nanaka. Good score from her. Jesse puts ahead with 69. We're waiting our next set of athletes here as the time goes. Everyone in the stadium, taking a moment to go get a drink and just relax a little bit as we pause. So we still have four athletes to go on this boulder. We see Brooke Rabatou come out and she's just composing herself ahead of this really dynamic and interesting climb. The moves, they are not easy to do, let alone to do quickly. Brooke having a little falter on the first attempt to see him there, maybe not quite committing into the undercut. She knows that Miho just did it, I expect, because that roar from the crowd I've said it before, but I think the entirety of Switzerland may have just heard that because it was a moment. So Brooke is into the five straight away. She's having a good round, a brilliant round for Brooke. Hits the slap and holds the swing. Yeah, different, different to Miho. Miho was catching a toe hook. Both methods really impressive. Now she's got this run to the left to do first, though. Kicking on the wall. Miho launch, she even hit that hopeful hole behind her when she made that swing. Brooke made the paddle with the one hand. Yeah, the way it was set, the paddle with the one hand, left hand, left hand again, and we got a good glimpse there of how positive that finishing hold is. That was why when Miho did that huge swing straight to the finishing hold, she had the time because she engaged with that arm to kick the wall with her left. 
Um, for Brooke there, she did the paddle, maybe needs to be a little bit quicker with her feet to throw her hips further to the left. But when she hits that last hold, she can't be too far left because of the way the hold is. It's almost an undercut. It is an undercut, sorry. Um, so she is going to have to be hips to the right of the hold so she's able to hold it, I think. There we go. Good analysis here from Shauna Coxie in our commentary box. Former athlete, former Olympian. She knows first hand what it's like to be on a stage like this, trying to qualify. And Brooke is up into the press, catches the swing once more, and she's got to do this jump up towards the flat hold above her head. Hits it right hand, can't hold it that time. It looked like she was a little off in the setup there, so not quite hitting that first hold as well as she wanted to. Almost sticking it regardless, but again, just slightly low and a bit of an awkward body position. But she can stick that again for sure. She's got time. She just needs to compose herself, which we know at Brooke is very, very good at doing. She's got the 10 points now. She's only looking for that 25. Her eyes keep darting up to that top hold, looking at the hold I expect, not at the number. But it's going to be hard not to be thinking about the points. Her mum and a renowned climbing coach was uh, waiting right at the front of the queue of people when I came into the stadium. It's like she'd walked up and, and sat there for hours to watch this moment. And we all are enjoying Brooke Rabatou's performance here. She goes once more, holds it this time. Matches the high zone. She starts the swing with 59 seconds left. Important to note, she's starting the swing. Her right foot is on the slippery part of a huge no texture hold. Unfortunately, not sticking at that time. Currently sitting in, in the second spot, 69.8. Listen to that crowd support in the background as well. <laughs> she wants more of it. Falls on that attempt though. Needs to still just make sure of these moves. Once more she's in. A great effort to stick that with all the pressure mounting up, with the clock ticking down. She's going to give absolutely everything that she can for this last attempt. Unfortunately, we don't see a top. We don't see Brooke hit that 25. Brooke knows that's something she's capable of doing. She opted for a different method on that final attempt, swinging her hips really far back without the foot on. It looked a lot better, unfortunately, not fingering out early enough. Okay, well, four minutes gets reset on the clocks, as do the boulders get reset. And we wait for our next set of athletes out. And Brooke is currently sitting in second. Yanya's already ahead of her, and there's only two athletes to go, uh, three athletes to go after Brooke. I can't take over her in the points as it stands. Ariane potentially could. These points, it all starts to shift around and it's going to be really important to look at those before the lead route because it becomes very obvious what you need to do on that lead route to be in that top three and get the ticket to Paris. Well, we're waiting for our next athlete. Here she is, Oriane runs on. She needs something here. Puts the mat down, that's just the last minute way to clean her feet. Rereads the route, making sure of it. And Oriane is pretty good at putting things behind her and just focusing on the next challenge ahead. Up into the press. She'll be into the five on the first time. Really smooth through that lower section. Makes the jump as well. You can see that she hit that first hold in the paddle, had so much time. She was so solid. She looked in a very comfortable position. She'd like another top here to add to that one. She's already got that method Brooke used, the bump bump with the left hand. The bump bump with the left hand comes spinning down. You can see she was peeling away from the wall. Kind of gravity just really fighting against her there, of course, as it always is. <laughs> and she grabs the brush. She wants to do it herself to make sure of it. As brush is helping as well down on the starting holds. That's the dust that uh, I said looked like plankton <laughs> on the sea yesterday. And I still stick with that as it floats through. Go Oriane in the background. 
Sasha Lehman's brother organises those volunteers. Just a little trivia fact for you. Like a great opportunity is Ariane's resting to take a look at the results. We will not see a 100 from Yanya Gambra. There was a slip that we missed. She has a 74.9 currently. If Ariane can get a top here, she will bump up into second position. If my math is, math is correct, which I believe it is. Um, Although positions and numbers of uh, ranking isn't actually very important here, it is interesting to look at the difference in points between where the top athletes are and the bottom because that plays a huge part in what they need to do on the lead route and even if it is possible for them to get up there in that top three. Yeah, we might have that scenario. I mean, we've seen, as we said at the beginning, Yanya uh, basically qual did qualify for this final without even climbing a lead wall. So uh, a lot can be decided in this boulder round. Orian goes again, hits the right hand, can't hold it and comes down. And she came out and she looked confident, she looked composed and we've started to see her fluster here. Of course, it's entirely understandable. The pressure is mounting and those points are looming at the top of the wall. Orian tending to prefer a boulder round to a lead round. So this is where she needs to excel. Like you said, on the lead route, those points are gonna be harder to get for those boulder specialists. So there is a lot of pressure and this is a big moment for her in her career right now. With a minute 15 to go, Oriane put liquid chalk on her hand, trying to get any extra friction she can. Chalks up with the powder chalk, so double chalked. Pulls onto the start, drops into that big swing, hits the five, and a minute buzzer will go as she's in the air. On her first attempt, she hit the first hold in the jump here, and she was so perfect in where her body position was that she had so much time in the paddle, in the movement. She didn't stop moving at all, but she had time to hit that next hold and be accurate. We saw Miho Nanaka do this with a toe hook, a very smart decision from her, much more repeatable, so she was able to have more attempts up high, but Ariane starting to look like she's struggling on this move, but we see her get I thought we were going to say we see her stick it now. That was what was in my mouth, ready to say out loud. I do believe she's capable of doing this boulder, and there is no doubt in my mind, but she is not yet able to have another attempt at that last move, and there is now only 10 seconds on the clock. Yeah, the time is ticking down. Ariane's getting cheered on. I don't think she's going to have time. She even looked back at the clock. That was almost a mistake. Three, two, one. She can't make the match. If she had, I think she might have got the control on that with a couple of seconds to go, but... No send for Oriane, and she can't quite believe that. Head in the hands. You would have expected Oriane to do a boulder like this. I think she may be, well, I hope that she knows she's capable of it. It's unfortunate that we didn't see that, but we do have that lead route to go, and she definitely can pull it back. It's going to be a tough position to go back and to let that go. So much of competing at the top end is about managing your emotions. The difference between these women out there on that stage can often be their approach and their mindset. It's not just about the physical aspects of climbing. I'm Ori runs onto the stage. Second to last athlete out. Yanni Garnbrett will come after her. And of course, we're just seeing one boulder now. This uh, new finals system that we've been perfecting over the years. This is the final stage of that process. When we say perfecting, there have been many test events. <laughs> there, have. there have been many different methods that have been tested, and that is why we're seeing this one today, because it has been the best way to combine these two sports together as one event of Lead and Boulder. I misses that. Yeah, and I, I think that's worth pointing out that there's a lot of people working on this point system. There's always going to be people talking about whether it's right or wrong. But when you combine sports, you have to come up with some kind of a compromise. And personally, I'm really enjoying this one because it's, I mean, whatever you think of it, it's so exciting throughout. I kicks. Can't hold it. She did get two hands to the hold. If she can get a little bit more power through her legs and maybe get a little bit of bend in the arms, I think we'll see her stick that move. She 
doesn't tend to look happy and in her comfort zone on boulders like this, but there's nothing you can do about what routes are put on the wall, what boulders are put on the wall. You have to be prepared for absolutely anything as a competition climber. These athletes will train relentlessly and really, really try and work on their weaknesses to make sure that they can climb anything that's put in front of them. So it's great to see I stick that first move. Yeah, she's in now, but comes up with the right hand. We talked a lot about height and what that can do. And the setters do spend a lot of time making sure that these moves are reachable for the athletes. So that's not a factor. So many other things that come into play as well as height. Of course, height can play a part. We see tall athletes struggle in other moves and, and shorter athletes struggle in different moves, if that makes sense. It's just how you use your height. Yeah, I mean, when you say it's not a factor, I, I disagree slightly. I think it is a factor. Um, because it's part of climbing to use what you have and climb in a way that suits you. So we see athletes of many different heights and different strengths and weaknesses. We talk a lot about strengths and weaknesses. I is really strong in certain aspects of climbing, but we do see her falter on more dynamic styles at times. The fact that she's able to work those weaknesses and do moves like that just shows how much she is going away and working on those weaknesses. And she's setting up for the paddle again now much better from her on her first attempt it looked like she went one hand and tried to catch the toe hook potentially reading the climb with miho her fellow japanese teammate in this finals when you read a climb you stand on the mat you're all together you get two minutes per boulder to have a look at the climbs to figure them out and the climbers will share beta between them. These climbers know each other. Most of them have been on the circuit for many years together. And then we have newer climbers coming in like Annie. And often the athletes are really welcoming to them. I do think sometimes, and I've definitely myself seen something and maybe not said anything. She's like, is that right? Maybe thinking it's a red herring or maybe just wanting to keep it to yourself. We are competitors after <laughs> all, but generally you'll see teammates try things the same way. And then I here making an adjustment to try and do it differently to her first attempt and not doing it the way that Miho was successful with. She doesn't know that Miho was successful with that method because she didn't get to see her and that teammates and athletes are not allowed to talk in isolation. So when they go back into that call zone, if there's athletes who haven't competed on that boulder yet, they can't say, hey, I did it this way. You should try that for sure. They're not allowed to do that. So I doesn't know what was successful for Miho and what works for other athletes either. A good explanation of that system. It's why we love having an athlete in the Coventry box here. You can just give us all of these first-hand experiences, which is just so beneficial. I says goodbye, 16 seconds on the clock. She goes. And we have our final athlete about to come on in the form of Yanya Garnbrecht, who will finish things off before the lead. So I looking down. So Yanya's standing in the background there, gets counted on, but she almost goes before the things, before the fingers finish moving. She looked very eager to get back out on those mats then, didn't she? She did, she was ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that scream from the audience member. Uh, I flicks with the left leg. Sorry, I Yanya flicks with the left leg. Almost stick in that first hole there without needing to pull through. She did, but she's looking in cruise mode as she eyes up this last move. There's a lot going on here, so all eyes on Yanya as she decides which method she wants to try. So already on 84.9, three tops and that high zone. Misses with the left. A big swing back from her. She brought both feet behind her and then flicked into it. Not quite getting the timing right, it looked like. Not necessarily a bad body position. I talk about hips a lot. It looked like she was in a good position, but I think the timing was just missed there. 
definitely something she's able to correct and already on that 84.9 she doesn't need this but she doesn't know that as well i think she'll know she's had a good round compared to the other athletes when you're sat in that isolation zone you can tell by how quickly an athlete returns to the isolation zone whether it's been successful and how quickly it might have been successful also by the look on the athletes faces <laughs> they give a lot away <laughs> Yeah, we talk about that quite a lot, actually, how expressive they can be. And Oriane, for sure, is one of those. I'm Ori, maybe a little bit more poker face, but uh, there's, every athlete responds differently to different situations. It's really cool for us to watch. Yanya again hits the right hand, campusing over. Power moves from her, and there, she takes a breath, and so do we in the commentary box. There's a lot here. The crowd ramping up, they are excited to see this. We've seen the top of this, so we know it's possible. It's not like we haven't seen it, so we know that Jan Yagambra is capable of doing this boulder. Oh, much closer with the left hand. Almost runs off the stage, the judge jumping up. And uh, I think she was in control, but I, could, I can imagine the panic there for the judge. I'd do the same. And now uh, Yanya is, she's a friend of mine, and I'm sure she won't mind me saying, but she is the clumsiest person off the wall that I've maybe ever met. <laughs> <laughs> On the wall, however, very graceful, very composed. We can definitely see Yanya do this climb, but only if she can make it happen in the next minute and 20 seconds. It's not long. It's not long. There's a smile on her face though i think she's really enjoying this atmosphere in the stadium and we know how she performs on the big stages and this is one of them so with a minute 10 here we go we also know that yan yan loves boulders that test her loves boulders that push the women in the round and we see her miss this paddle jump with only a minute to go hopefully we can see her get back up there it'd be great to see a top of this but a shout out to Miho Nanaka for smashing this boulder and currently the only top. Yeah, it was really strong from her. She gets in between the brushes and the brushes leave. Get out of the way, guys. Yanya's on the war path. 49 seconds. Hits the right hand. Shoes the brushes out of the way, but they clearly did a good job for her because she stuck it that time. Yeah, it worked. Right, here we go. 27 seconds, the crowd are just roaring her through this last move. She sets herself up. Can she do it? Not that time. It looked like she had a slip as she hit that no text hole. Wow, this is interesting. Yes, a great score from Yanya, but she is not used to walking away without a top, and she does have the lead route to come, as do all the women. She needs to resettle herself, and I know she's in the lead, but Yanya is someone who I do think we see her fluster when she doesn't get a top. Uh, she'll have some time now to refocus. What an exciting end to the comp. We'll see some confirmation of the scores in a second on the screen, I'm sure. But first of all, we'll see a replay here of Yanya's moves. Powerful stuff from her, but couldn't make the left hand. There's a little jib under there she was aiming for. Hit it, but not enough to stick it. Powerful moves from Miho. And Yanya says goodbye and let's have a look at the scores on the doors as we finish boulder yanni garmer leading the way with an 84.9 but rabbitu 69.8 jesse after that 69 orian Berton with a 54.7 miho nanaka 54.4 close between those two i mori on 44.5 annie sanders down in the 20s 24.6 jane kim at the bottom she'll need to do a lot on the lead wall 14.1 is her score and hats off to the root setters, not a single tie in there. Yeah, no ties, good separation, and Yanya leading the way. We have a bit of a pause in proceedings here now as the, uh, the comp continues. So, we'll see some highlights in a sec, and then we'll pause and say goodbye so we can <laughs> go and get a drink, because my voice is starting to go here as we watch all of the action <laughs> from earlier on. Jesse getting a top. Fantastic from her. Miho Nanaka swinging, waving goodbye, but Rabatu on fire at the moment as well, as she comes down from the wall. She's in second position at the moment. Oriane, I mean, we'd expect some of those boulders to go, but there's, there's more climbing to come. She's on 54. 
And look at this foot placement, trying to find that as Jesse reaches up. And Yanya Garnbrett, well, really good from her. Did drop that last boulder, though, so not perfection from Yanya, but a great round from her. There were so many exciting moments in that round, some surprises, as we've said. That is competition climbing for you. I thought it was a great round to watch, some wild attempts, lots of big dramatic falls too. Bouldering is an exciting sport to watch, as is lead. We've got that neck and the lead route. It looks really cool. It does, cats to come. Myself and Sean have had a sneak peek. You'll get to see it later on. And the athletes uh, get to check it out themselves. They read the boulder, haven't looked at the lead yet, so they'll do that. And I'm being told that observation time is around about 9.15 tonight. So in about 20 minutes, they'll get to look at it. There's not a lot of time to go back to ISO and calm themselves down and get into the lead mode mentality. But Rabatou spirals down. Remember, she's in second, Yanya first, Jesse Pilt's third. That's our podium finishes at the moment. And if things ended now, they'd get the Olympic tickets. But of course, We've got 100 more points to try to get on the lead wall before we find that out. Right, we will go away and return shortly. Thank you so much, Shauna. Thank you to everyone who's watching, and we will be back very soon. Thank you.
So here we are for the lead part of this boulder and lead competition. We finished with the boulder, that was earlier on. So if you're just joining us, you missed a very intense round of competition climbing. We are sweating here in the commentary box, and I hope you are at home too, these athletes putting on a show. My name is Matt Groom. I am joined by Shauna Coxie here in the commentary box, and watching the women observe the route. Shauna, talk us through this. For people who are not used to seeing this, the athletes are competing against each other, but they're sharing beats and they're talking to each other. They are, and just to, just to explain what they're doing first, so we can see the clock in the bottom right corner of the screen, and sometimes we can see it on the stage as well. The athletes will have six minutes to observe the route, and they also have six minutes of climbing time. And what they're doing is they're planning out the best method. We call it beta. So in climbing terms, when we say beta, it is the sequence of hand movements or foot movements to move through parts of the wall. So they'll look for every single hand and foot movement that they expect or hope to do on the wall and also maybe some options for if when they're up there it doesn't feel quite right or if they need to kind of do something differently because the hold is maybe not as good or the move they planned isn't possible or it doesn't feel like it works very well because 
they only get one attempt on this lead route. But like you said, the athletes share that beta, they chat together, they're all communicating. I did wonder if they forced athletes to be silent during observation, how much would that change the sport? <laughs> but that is not the case. And we get a look of the lead route right now. So the athletes are out there with binoculars so they can get the best look of the holds that are up there. We can see on the yellow on the left of the screen, there's some little black holes. You'll see the athletes move around the stage, trying to gather as much information as they can moving back moving left moving right just trying to see absolutely everything to make it as easy as possible to make the best decision on the wall they need to climb efficiently as as efficiently as they can we see them jumping down now moving really far back the crowd has to be quite far back for this bit and then sometimes they let them come in a little bit closer but we can get a little glimpse of the crowd there it's really important that they gain as much information as possible. Sometimes we see athletes making notes and doing drawings. I'm a terrible drawer. I never did that myself personally. And what's interesting is all of these athletes will now go back into um, isolation after observation. And some of these athletes won't climb for quite a while, it feels like. So they have to remember the whole route and be prepared for any eventuality on that wall. Yeah, so they're trying to figure out the sequences and it's a resistance style route. So not necessarily a specific one move hard bit, a crux. It just builds in intensity as you go towards the top. 100 points available, remember, that is what they are aiming for and that gets added to their boulder score. And look how many phones are in the air recording those athletes. It's one of the great things about climbing competitions if you come and watch you're really right next to the climbers you can hear what they're saying in this stadium which is pretty special it really is and you say they can hear what they're saying it's because the athletes are talking to each other again like you said you can see Yanya, Brooke and Jayin all talking about it there their hands in the air it almost looks like a dance it can look quite strange I do think route reading is a really important tool for anyone listening that wants a top tip. Always look where the climb starts, where the climb finishes, and plan your sequence as you move through it. And if you want to know if you got it right, video yourself and watch it back, because often you do it very differently to what you expect. And the coaches do video these climbs to feed it back to the athletes after the competition. But right now, there are the coaches as if on cue. Thank you very much, team. Japanese coaches sitting down there, Slovenian coaches, and they can't do much to help their athletes at this stage. They can't, but the videos aren't just for feedback afterwards because they're also to ensure that the athlete gets given the correct score. So they use that for an analysis before they put in an appeal if they disagree with the score that's been given. Athletes will gain points as they move through this route, so I can explain that a little bit now. The top is worth 100 points, and then we've got four distinct sections. The top, when we see a one on the wall, let's start there. Let's go from the bottom to the top. Uh, the first few moves aren't worth any points until they get to a hold that's got a one mark next to that. At that point, each move each hold, not each move, so every time they hit a hold, it's worth one point. The next 10 moves after that, two points per hold. The next 10 moves again, three points per hold. The next 10, four points per hold. And clipping the chain is when they get that 100 points. They can't just match the top and let go. There we go. Good explanation of that, Shauna. Thank you very much. And now we're about to see this 3D render of the wall but first of all we'll look at our wall 15 meters tall 12 meters wide 40 degrees overhanging in the middle of things and the head wall that section of wall at the top it changes in angle so we go from 10 to 40 to 25 degrees at the top and as we rotate through we can see the route itself that snakes upwards through the middle towards the top and there is that hundred you were talking about have to clip the final quick draw to get that and that's the start and this route, we've talked through it with the route setters, it's very distinct sections. We've got a crimpy section down low and then coming into a much more kind of dynamic but yet still quite, quite crimpy, the small holds on these blue volumes but you're having to be very bouldery, quite compressed having to be quite compressed between those holds. Moving into this top section where things do get really, really difficult with a dramatic last move, just as we all love to see on the lead wall. However, some athletes, they don't make those dramatic moves because they can do anything they want to get to the top. Bar standing on the bolt, they are not allowed to do that, but they also have to clip the clips in order. The bolts do have bolt covers on, which is good to see because they can stand on those. 
Exactly. Well, that's what's to come. But now let's have a look at the round previously. These are some of the highlights from what we saw before. And we will see a scoreboard at some point. But just to let you know, Yanni Garmer leading the way on 84.9. Brooke Rabatou, 69.8. Jesse Pilt, 69. That's our top three. And I won't go through all the points, but just to tell you, those are our current podium sitters. And we are looking for uh, our top three who will get an Olympic ticket tonight and be crowned the world champion in Boulder and lead. And Oriane Bertolt swinging around early on, and I'm Ori. That was a nasty fall, but she did bounce back and recover. We didn't see any sign of that uh, as a niggling injury. Yeah, she got back up. She had more attempts. She got on the next climb too. We've seen all our athletes put everything out there on the boulder wall, or maybe not everything. It looked like they were pushing to the absolute max, but we don't know if they've held anything back for lead. Have they been tactical in their decisions, in their attempts? It will be yet. It's yet to be seen, and it's not long to wait until we get started. We see all eight athletes have one attempt at this lead route. If they slip at the start, that's their attempt over. They have to be so careful and so cautious to climb this route delicately, precisely, efficiently, if they want to get the best possible attempt that they can. The higher they get, the more points they get on the board. And then as the round goes on, it's gonna become more and more clear what the athletes need to do to get onto the podium tonight. And if you get on the podium at this World Championships in the Leaden Boulder, you are getting an Olympic ticket. Now, Shona, we've discussed uh, your contribution to the sport, which was massive, of course, and you've been in this position. You got an Olympic ticket. I mean, look, we can't speak for these athletes, so I'm going to ask your expertise. <laughs> How did you feel when you finally got that in your hand? So I qualified for the Olympic Games at the World Championships in Hachiyoji, Japan in 2019. It was the first Olympic event, and the Olympic qualification was a little different because we had speed included as a combined format. When I qualified for the Games, the biggest emotion I felt was disbelief. I just couldn't believe that it had happened. It was the most intense event I've ever experienced, competing in three world championships and then a fourth as the combined, the Olympic qualifier. Similar to what these athletes have done, with speed being separate now, they've competed in the Boulder World Championships. They've competed in the lead world championships. We are seeing world championship, world champions climb on the wall right now. It's absolutely incredible that they have done so much climbing to get to this point. So yeah, it's not by any means what you see right here. It's a whole host of effort and demands that these athletes have put on their bodies. In the years leading up to this moment, not only what we see out on stage, you have to remember how much dedication these athletes have to this sport. Oh, we're watching, and yeah, talking about uh, the sport and what they've given to the sport, this lady here, Yanni Garmbrett, when I mean, she's given a lot back, she's our Olympic champion, and she's leading the way in the top spots as we wait for athletes to approach this lead wall. And Yanni Gamba already with one gold medal and a silver medal. She's, are we giving it away? I've just given it away. That's I'm done. sorry if you've not watched it already. You should have done. But she is the world champion in Boulder, vice world champion in lead. I, Murray, the world champion in lead. There is just so much going on. We've got Ariem Batone with a medal already as well in Boulder and Brooke Grabber too. These aren't just athletes. These are incredible incredible, formidable athletes on this stage. But like you said, it's gone. All of that happened just a few days ago, but it doesn't matter anymore. They can't do anything to change their result that's on the board other than what they put down on this lead wall. The pressure is building and the intensity in this arena, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. The crowd in here, they are excited to see these Olympic tickets be handed over and they are actual tickets. They are, and someone said to me, where's the tickets? We didn't catch them on the live stream, but trust me, they, uh, they got given them the speed climbs I'm talking about here. They, we gave those uh, tickets away last night. They have actual tickets, I saw them, they exist and they're pretty cool, so uh, that, Maybe we'll catch it today. So the camera teams are getting ready. You can see in the arch there. And we're waiting for our first athletes out. I think there's a presentation first as well. There's certainly dots on the ground, but we'll, we'll wait and see. 
but we're coming up to the point where we start for the lead round. So we're expecting our first athlete out in a minute. And as you said, the atmosphere building here, absolutely packed in the stadium. Someone said to me uh, the other day, hang on a second, it looks like there's, uh, there's no people sitting on the right. Where are all the people? Well, they're not selling those seats, as you can see on the right of your screen, because you won't be able to see the lead wall. But at the back of the auditorium, where they are allowed in, it's up to the rafters full. People really enjoying this spectacle here. The wall broken into sections, purple at the bottom, yellow and black, blue, yellow and black at the top. So you can have an idea of where we are on the wall when they climb. Well, the TJ does what he's been doing all along in the seconds before he drops that atmospheric music. <sighs> I'm suddenly very nervous, Shauna, for these athletes mainly, but Look, it's all to play for out there, and dreams could come true. Me too, I can feel the nerves, butterflies in my tummy. People ask me, is it harder to compete or is it harder to watch? And I can tell you from my personal experience, sitting in this chair and watching these athletes is so much harder than being on the stage and doing it yourself. From a nerves perspective, physically, I'm pretty comfortable. <laughs> I don't know, my skin is awful at the moment. I've got uh, sweaty fingers continuously for days. It's like I've been swimming around a bath. <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon their skin might be a little bit worse, Matt. Come on. I don't know, potentially. I mean, that's pretty bad, Sean. <laughs> it's all soft and terrible. I need to get back on the wall. <laughs> right, we're waiting for our climbers now. I think we're getting close as the DJ ramps things up. He's hit the button. And the MC announces the first climber. It is not just a climbing competition. It is a spectacle. It is such a good show. And we see Jay and Kim run out onto that stage, taking a deep inhale and just absorbing all of the energy that is in the room as she reads the route before pulling on. Now, Jay has a lot to do with it. 14.1 is her score, and that is the lowest of our eight. So even... Uh, if she gets the maximum 100, she'll only be a little bit above Yanya. And when you think Jesse Pilts is on 69, almost 70, Giant needs a fantastic round. She's got to top this thing out, really, if she wants a chance. I do also think that Giant is just so excited to be in this round. It's great experience for her in a format that is not very often competed in. So, yes, she would need a lot to make it, but what an amazing achievement just to be here. So a slightly slow start from her there. Yeah, she actually missed the jib on the left hold. She bumped her hand up a little bit, her first finger hit it, and she realized there was one there, adjusting straight into that as soon as she felt it. So good that she corrected. We know the start is quite comfortable climbing. Of course, not, not, not easy by any stretch of the imagination, but we've seen a lot of awkward, weird, uncomfortable starts. This is climbing. You're just moving between the handholds, trying to be as efficient as possible. But these handholds, they aren't very good. They are making them look good. Jay and Kim looks very happy on those holds, but they are bad holds that are going to be really zapping her forearms and her energy and making the top sections much, much harder. Yeah, she's hit the first scoring zone as well. So from now on, she'll get points on the board. And there you can see on the lead, it says four. And Shauna explained that point system earlier on, but it ramps up in terms of difficulty and the points awarded. So more points, harder climbing, which is uh, fair enough, really. And Jain is her normal start. She's really precise on the holds and making sure of every hand movement here. She always climbs so smoothly, but that does tend to lead to her climbing quite slowly. You can see on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, the clock there, she has six minutes total to climb. She's on 4.20 right now. That clock is obviously counting down. She's about to hit the 10 zone, so she's not quite yet halfway up the wall. Yes, she has a lot of time, but she needs to keep a really progressive pace. It's a balance, isn't it? And we see climbers doing that differently. Some climb really quickly. Trying to avoid the pump, Jain has this style. So she reaches up with the right hand onto the crimps, upgrades that right foot. She really does sometimes look like she's almost in slow motion as she makes the moves towards the next hold. It's just so uh, controlled from her. And a demonstration of her strength. She is so insanely strong to be able to do these moves controlled. 
There's uh, white lines on the wall, you can see there. That's placed by the route setters, and that's going to be where the athletes could get a toe in. It's just a little hint for them. Yeah, we'll see her reach up to the right, and when you say get a toe in, they're going to put their toe underneath where those white lines are and hook their foot underneath. That is the easiest way to do it. Maybe we won't see all athletes do it, but we do see Jayin make the most of that now. So you can see those big white lines on that black volume. Root Setters being kind enough to, to suggest some beta there for them. Now, that's the hold she's on. Good shot of it to show how bad it is. Three minutes left in this Olympic qualifier as she nips the next 30 mark. Remember the points, ramp up at, between each mark. She has the 30 in her left hand now. At this point, the holds are now worth three points per hold. If she makes a progressive movement to the next hold without falling off, she will, she will get a 0.1 awarded, which was like a plus in lead. Right, she's crossing underneath, and this section of holds, it changes, and you said it for the uh, root setters, that it's a different style immediately when they hit this. It is different style, different holds. She's on blue pill holds here. They do have screw-ons, some of them. Screw-ons are the little holds that are attached to the bigger holds. You can see they're kind of changing how they hold them, but she's now heading into a very compression section. She's gonna flick out left, a really big move. Coming down, really straight arm. She's underneath her her hand, but her body weight is directly underneath her. She's gone out to the left now. You see her hit that. She's gonna have to squeeze between these. She goes from a wide compression to a narrow compression, and now she's gonna slap over, needing to be accurate, because the big hold above the hold she's going to is a blocker, just forcing them to be really accurate and also preventing a heel hook. Yeah, heel hooks used by the athletes and those rest or make a move and the root setters want them to do it. Almost missed the jib there, adjusted into it. And now she's approaching the head wall where we change the angle to that 25 degrees. You see her turn there, she's looking down at the clock to check how much time she has. She has one minute 20 as she reaches the final section, the head wall being the change of angle here. She's up into the head wall on this next section. We see her on the yellow crimps and the black volumes. She's starting to look like she's trying, but she is getting very high and getting a lot of points on the board right now. Yeah, that move to the blocked hold, she made it look easy, but it's a really powerful movement and it just shows her strength that she could do it that way. A powerful movement, and the root setters said it was a really far move. Jayan being one of the shorter climbers, yet making it look easy. She looks like she's got energy left to burn. She does, but she hasn't really got time. 44 seconds on the clock, she's got a way to go. She does, but she's still so solid, she's still so controlled, and she is not far from the top. This is a great climb from her. Oh, that was close. Hit the crimp, locks it off with the hand. 30 seconds on the clock as she drops the knee down, crosses through, pops the foot. Crosses through and loses the back foot. That is what brought her down there. She puts the tongue out. She looks like she tried hard. It was a great effort. And 92.1 points. That is huge for Jayan Kim. She is a lead specialist. We would expect her to be doing well. But wow, should she be happy with that? <laughs> she is. Look at that smile. I think it's a bit of relief as well. I mean, there's been so much build up to this moment. And then she's done. She's done as well as she could do in that moment. And now it's up to the other athletes to beat her. She did a good job there. She really did do a good job. Wow, that was so incredible. She climbed perfectly. Yeah, not a mistake. That almost slow motion action she had. And the heart immediately and a big smile on her face. Good job, Jan Kim. We know that these roots punish mistakes. It's been a theme throughout this competition. If you slip up, if you make a mistake, you are out of there. So the fact that Jayan Kim was able to put in such a good performance, it just shows how flawlessly she climbed. I expect she's going to be feeling incredibly satisfied after that. I'm probably really quite pumped. Her forearms are going to be burning. <laughs> to get a chance to shake out now. And the difference between the boulder and lead is in boulder, they leave the stage and go to the back, back into the isolation, the waiting area, because you can't be looking at other people's beta. But of course, she's done. Only one route, so now she gets to go onto the left, sit on the stage, and enjoy the rest of the action. As Annie Sanders comes out, and Annie at 16, we keep mentioning her age, but it, 
it's nothing to do with her her quality on the wall and she can hold on forever when she's in the mode if she likes the route. Well, she can't hold on forever because she's forever. only got six minutes. <laughs> That's true. I mean, she we're not going to let her. We'd have to pull her off at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and he is up through the middle section. Good holds, but still, you've got to be precise. We sure that Jean missed the uh, jib on this move, but Annie's straight into it. Interestingly, watching climbers on the start of the route kind of can often give a feel or give an maybe a suggestion of how they might be feeling. If they are missing holds, if they are jittering their feet around, if they look relaxed in their face or not, it all gives a lot of way as to where their emotions might be at, which can suggest how far they might get on the wall. Annie looking composed and really accurate with her hand placements. She's moving her left hand down now so she's able to get her heel in, making space for that. She needs to do a lot on this route if she wants to be back up there finishing the boulder round with 24.6 so not one of the highest scores by any means but we know she can put a lot down on the route when it counts and it's going to have to count now for her she stretches up to that crimp makes the uh, clip under her body adjusted the rope and there is the score so currently in the scoring zone with a four, and that will start moving up. But you can see the difference it does make. Jan Kim, even with that, 106, which is pretty close to Yanya's score of 84. And there is Josh Larson and Meg there, two of the USA coaches. They'll be very nervously watching this with two athletes in uh, the finals from the USA. Annie may be starting to look like she's having to work a little bit harder here. She's about to hit the 10 zone. These crimps, they are so very small, often not in cut, so they're not they're not biting, they're not holding on to the climbers. The climbers are having to hold on to them, as I like to say. It's almost like it's hard work to keep hold of them. Um, if you feel like you're fighting just to stay on the wall, then making movements is going to be very difficult. Annie, she's moving confidently, but she's pausing for a long time after she, a long time, she's pausing for a long time, Relatively Feels like a long after time, she it? hits a hold. We can see she's on three minutes 40, which doesn't seem like much, but as she's not quite approaching the midsection of the wall, if she wants to take a rest, if she wants to shake out, she's going to need to do so very, very quickly. She can't take a long rest. She's climbing quite slowly, it feels like. Yeah, I want to almost be shouting them on sometimes, just sort of chiving them up, because it's uh, my eyes are glued on that clock, which is going down. And Annie resting in that position. There was a hold down on 10 where you thought she might rest because it was a better hold perhaps, but uh, she moved quite quickly through that sequence. Yeah, I asked the route setter on the 10 hold, do you think we'll see athletes resting there? He didn't agree that that would happen. I can see why because it is so low down and he also said it's not a very good hold. In my opinion, these women, it doesn't matter whether the route setters think it's a good hold or not, they can shake out on absolutely anything. But it's quite low down, so they're not very tired yet. Annie is opting to do some slightly longer rest, but kind of shaking a little on each hold often. She's moving a little bit faster now, so maybe kind of feeling a bit more uncomfortable as the holds get worse. You can see her arms bent as she's making that clip, suggesting she might be getting a little bit tired potentially. And she's heading into the most physical section of the climb right now. This, this blue section is the most powerful section of the climb. Yeah, and remember, they had that bold around earlier on, so physical sections, if you're tired and your skin is bad, isn't great. So Annie's going to have to fight as she gets the left hand in and stretches the left out. Micro shakes with the hand, maybe starting to imply that she's getting pumped. And also her face is looking a lot less relaxed, suggesting that she's starting to feel the fatigue. It's not an easy section here. Yes, we saw Jane Kim move through it smoothly, but she is very experienced on a lead rope, and we, that does not suggest that all athletes are going to be making it up to that head wall. Annie's starting to have to really fight here. Yeah, she is. Got that crimp in, and was, sorry, clip in, and was crimping hard with the right hand. A bit like Jane's style. Oh, that dropped down. She nearly lost it, and we could be seeing her go. We do. And that leaves her outside of the top three with a combined score of 69.6. So not enough for Annie on the night. Not enough for Annie. Her elbow was raising. We saw she got pumped. The move out to the left is a 
very demanding move physically. It is so very hard. We saw Jayan move through it quite smoothly, but we saw Annie there. She lost it on that move. But what an incredible experience that she's got now under her belt. Yes, she's not in the top three tonight. She's not walking away with her Olympic ticket. The next opportunity is the Continental Championships. All Continental Championships will be coming at the end of this year. I say the end of this year. They start in October, which is just a few months away, but they'll all be done by the end of the year. And then coming into next year, we have the Olympic Qualifier Series. It is not over for Annie Sanders. Our next athlete out is Jessie Filtz. Did well in Boulder. What could she do in lead? All right, so Jessie rubbing her hands there. And something I've been thinking about is if you get a ticket here at the World Champs, the stress kind of goes for a while. You can go away and train. You know you don't have to fight for places anymore. And that relief must feel good. I mean, you did that uh, so you can just focus <laughs> on the Olympics. Very much so. My journey was a little bit confusing with COVID, obviously, <laughs> delaying the games. But yes, when I qualified for the Olympics, it was a huge relief because it suddenly allows you to focus on the event, not having to do a lot of preparation for other events. And yeah, it really changes things up. One thing that I do think is important to remember, if one athlete from a nation qualifies here, then there is only one spot from that nation available for that gender. It is two athletes per country, per gender, that can qualify regardless of what country it is. Um, there is a host country spot for France, but if they qualify two athletes, they won't be awarded a third. It just guarantees them a spot. So, yeah, it's there's a bigger impact than just who we see get the tickets tonight. It definitely impacts other athletes quite significantly, which I think is important to note and definitely something we'll be talking about at later events. But right now, Jessie is on the wall and looking calm and collected. Yeah, similar style to the other three. I wonder what about this route makes you climb like this. They've all just been very careful of their moves. Like they, they don't want to make sudden movements. Maybe some of that's the heat, but it's, uh, it's interesting to watch. The root setters were also saying this route should suit their styles. He expected that the women would be feeling comfortable on this style of climbing. They know that it's all about points. It changes the way they set routes. Root setters often set bottom to top for competitions like this, whereas with climbs in this format, they set top down, which is a huge change for the root setters. It is a different way of thinking, both in Boulder and lead because of this point system. Right, Jessie is getting points on the board. Meanwhile, she moves up into third position as it stands, remember. And you can see those graphics earlier on. That's provisional because it's based on what the other athletes do, of course, later on, just to sort of emphasize that. Jessie now bumping up into silver position, 85.0 her score currently. But of course, if you finish the round outside of that top three, you know you're not going in. So now we know that Jesse might be. Of course, there's a lot more to play for, but all eyes on the scoreboard right now as you see all those numbers. And back to Jesse as she just makes a clip so efficiently, looking calm, collected, smooth. She's a previous world champion in lead. She's familiar with fighting hard, pushing herself to the absolute limit. Rarely see Jesse make mistakes. She's just looking so smooth. She came out to Boulder with a confidence that is so exciting to see Jessie absolutely own the stage. When she climbs well, it's a beautiful spectacle to watch. It is, and she's up to scoring point 30 here. Up with the right hand, but the uh, the moves change. So suddenly the crimps disappear, blue holds appear, and we need some compression here, some power from Jessie. Moves the feet over towards the left foot on that jib, on the black volume. And within just a few moves, if she can keep it together, we will see her overtake. We do right now. We see her overtake Jayan Kim's score. She's currently on a total of 108, but looking like she's got a lot more in the tank. Yeah, approaching or nearing the head wall section, but she has to go far left and then start going back right towards the middle of the wall just to orientate yourselves. This angle can be hard to tell. 
Making light work of the move where we lost Annie, just showing that this really is her happy place. She's comfortable and leadable. Gets a high heel, really helping her to pull her hips underneath the hands. Again, another high heel. Great demonstration of her flexibility and ability to use her legs so well to move through these sections efficiently. Well, there Annie Sanders watches on. She's watching her climb. Side foot turned onto that crimp. Bumps into the right hand, and resting on a straight arm as we're nearing the yellow part of the wall. On to score 60 here. 100 beckoning up high. And that's the difficult, reachy, powerful move which she's hit with the right hand. And a roar from the crowd as she hits that. Her elbows are starting to come up, but she is still fighting and she's fighting hard. This matters so much. An Olympic ticket is on the line right now as she pushes as hard as she possibly can through these moves. It doesn't look easy for Jessie, but wow, is she trying hard right now. She's fighting, isn't she? Jean Kim looks up as well. Hits the crimp with the right, brings the left foot on that no text onto the crimp, onto the jib that's there. Shaking out with her elbow, starting to rise, coming back down so she can shake the other arm and give it a chalk. Oh, this is intense. Oh, it really is, isn't it? Builds as we go. Minute 14 on the clock. But remember, the feet are tricky here. We're nearing the point we lost, Shane Kim. Up with the left hand. Blocked as well. Oh, just hits it with the fingertips, but comes down. 137 for Jessie. I think she thought she could have gone a bit further there, but. Yeah, you could see her put her head in the hands. It looked like she had maybe a little bit more to give. She was really fighting and then managed to compose herself. She shook out, she got something back. It looked like she didn't build her feet quite high enough to make that move work. Still. What a fight from Jesse! And some high scores are going down early in the round. Not to say all athletes will be getting up there. This isn't the order that we see the athletes come out in isn't necessarily suggestive of how they will perform on the wall. So lots still to play for, but Jesse currently in first position. Yes, with five climbers to go, but what a spot to be in. It's spot indeed to be. Well, Jesse is done, and we wait for our next athletes to enter. Well, Miho Nanaka entered the last boulder with a fire in her eyes. She smashed it, got that hold, and hopefully she's going to carry that momentum, that energy, into this lead climb. She really did, and what a climb it was from her on that last boulder. It was such a good fight. However, she did finish the round with 54.4, not as high as maybe you would expect the fact that she only she was the only climber to finish that boulder. She's got a lot of work to do if she wants to be up there. Jessie is currently in 157.1, so she cannot overtake Jessie's score even if she tops. There we go. So maths going on the commentary box. And I tell you, if you're uh, if you're nervous at home, we're nervous here as well, and the crowd as well. I mean, they were boisterous during the boulder round. Now suddenly, they're tense. Everyone leaning forward in their seat. Let's see what Miho Nanaka can do as she makes the first two clips with ease. Got to just not overgrip down low. Plenty of climbing to come, and Miho. A a bit bouncier in her style through here than we've seen in the first few. Climbing quicker. So, oh, but missing this clip and fumbling with it. Hits it now, makes the clip. Crosses in with the left hand. And we think, we've been doing maths here, we think Jesse Pilts has made it into the top three as we're looking at this screen, which means that she only Jan Yagambra and Brooke Rabatou can score higher than Jessie Pilts right now. Oh. So she, she, yeah, she is in the top three. She will be getting an Olympic ticket tonight. I don't want to take the attention off Miho. I've done the maths. I'm confident. <laughs> I checked it like five times. The, uh, there are only two athletes that can beat her. So if one of those athletes falters, um, no, the only two athletes can beat her, so if one of those athletes falters, she'll be second. If both of them do, she will be first, but she will be in that top three. As Miho hits the 10-hold, we will come back to the action, but 
wow, I wonder if Jesse even knows. Yeah, we might get a shot of her later on. We'll see. Right, Miho makes the clip, moves forward from that slight fumble she had down below. And she as well is being careful of her movements as she moves up to fourth place. 16 is her score on the lead. Hits the crimp, gets the toe on the left, and micro shaking. Jessie seems to be moving from moments of complete calm into these moments where she's a bit more snatchy. Sorry, I said the wrong name again, didn't I? Miho Nanaka crosses up. My brain is just fried with all this climbing at the moment. Miho into uh, 33. 87.4 is her total score. It's been a long week and we've seen some incredible moments and we've seen Miho climb in the finals of the lead oh, world championship. Falls. But she just falls there, looking a little disappointed. She looks at her hand. She didn't have her head in her hands. Maybe she knows that she couldn't get it back. She really is looking at her hands there. Could have been a big slip. Gives the crowd a wave, gives them a clap, but a shake of her head. I was expecting more from Miho. Maybe Miho was expecting more from herself. Unfortunate to lose her there. We won't see her on the podium, that's for sure. Oh, not for sure, because she's currently in third. So nothing is for sure. Nothing is for sure for Miho <laughs> I would take that back. So that is a nervous weight she's going to have now, which is, oh gosh, I can't even imagine what she's going through. She's going to have to sit on the chairs on the right and just watch the scoreboard tick through, watch the others climb. Miho getting hugs. From Jesse there as she sits down, and Jane Kim. And uh, the volunteers in the background, the cheese lady is back. I don't think Jesse knows. I don't think she I hope my math is right. I've checked my <laughs> WhatsApp to make sure no one's messaging me going, you are wrong. I am fairly confident. Um, oh no, I'm, I'm really confident. That was a surprise for Miho, it really was, but a performance from Jessie and Giant Kim, what a performance from her, and Annie Sanders, not the performance she would have been wanting, but again, what great experience from her, lots more opportunities for all of these women to qualify. Well, that is our current scoreboard, so Jessie Pilts is leading the way with 157, and uh, yeah, we think she's through. Giant Kim in second place, Miho Nanaka, they're the ones who have climbed. Annie Sanders, she's the other one who's climbed this route, but She's down in sixth, and it's all about that boulder score. And we can see now the importance of boulder when added to lead. It just, oh, tense stuff here. Jesse leading the way, though, at the moment. So Jesse is in, if I'm correct, I'm pretty confident that I am. <laughs> However, Jai In and Miho are not secure. Anyone can kind of overtake them at this point, depending on their performance. So they have to sit in that seat and watch if their score changes. That must be a hard thing to do. I don't know if they'll be expecting the changes. Maybe they will. There are some huge names still to come. Some lead climbers that we are very familiar with seeing right at the top of that wall. And then some some athletes that you would say are boulder specialists, potentially, or Orion Batone, I guess all of the others that we've still got to come are generally pretty high up on that wall, but Orion needs to do a lot. I have got confirmation of this as well. Jesse has qualified for the Olympic Games. We were unsure of our maths, but we've been <laughs> told now. I wasn't now. unsure, but I didn't want to commit. <laughs> right, there we go. So Jesse is through. What a performance from Jesse Pilts. Oh, they've just told her she is on the big screen in the arena right now, <laughs> shaking her head. I think the tears might be coming soon. She looks in total disbelief right now. Here the tears start to fall. <laughs> Brilliant for Jesse. And actually, Shorty, you know what? We were right to be hesitant until we got those official results because, of course, appeals can come through. Of Things course, can change. So uh, we had to wait for that official confirmation. We got it. Congratulations, Jessica Peltz. Our first Olympic ticket of the night has gone. Oh, watching Miho, she fell lower than she might have wanted, and I think she just was starting to burn out. She had those moments where she was slow, then speeded up as the pump built. Yeah, she started to get quicker between the moves, slower on the resting positions. You're exactly right. And we lost her just at the beginning of that blue section. We know it's a hard section, but... Okay, so we wait for our next athlete, and it is going to be Oriane. She's back there in the dark. Sorry, no, Oriane. Brooke Rabatou comes out. There she is on stage. 
And now, Brooke, what a bold around from her. We were all cheering her. Everyone was cheering her in the audience. She's come out with intent on that bold around and actually needs to back it up on the lead wall. Sure, she does. You know, she finished outside of the top three in the semi-final round. She wants to be in that top three, so she knows that she needs to lay it all out here on this lead route. Something we know Brooke can do, something she's capable of. Brooke is so good at getting into that flow state, into the right mindset. You can see here, she's just taking it all in, closes her eyes, takes a breath, pumps the arms, smiles at the belay, gives her a nod, and she's off. She is about to start. This is the moment that Brooke Rapitou gets to fight for her Olympic spot if she wants it tonight. Of course, there are other opportunities, but we know she wants it. She wants it as much as anybody else does, and she's going to be out there fighting for it. I love that transition when she went from the eyes closed to the smile. So, Brooke, what can you do for us? Crosses through. Nerves are taut here. She makes a double clip, hits the long draw getting the encouragement from a lot of people in the crowd. And I did a little piece outside for the World Climbing Club where we were asking for predictions and a lot of people were predicting this lady would get through. So a favorite amongst the crowd as well. But don't forget how much pressure that adds on to these athletes. Of course, it's impossible not to feel it. Every single one of them will be. And the arena, we've talked previously about the fact that after some climbers have been in around the crowd get much more knowledgeable an important factor to note because you can hear there are shouts right now but the dj is nice and calm the crowd are relatively calm too brooke therefore i imagine will know that this section isn't necessarily important but that can also make sure that will also mean she needs to make sure not to make mistakes and be very attentive something she's really really good at she's so good at relaxing into her climbing and using everything she can on the wall to climb a efficiently. It's great to see her moving with confidence right now and looking really smooth. She is, yeah, she's into the 10 point now. So scores will ramp up a little faster as she goes further. In fifth at the moment, 10 points on lead, 79.8 overall. And she is resting on this hold. And she's good at doing this, those, those small crimps she likes manages to find a moment to shake out down low. She really is. She's so good at resting efficiently. You can see it. she's open handing on that hole, which means her fingers are quite straight, not up in a crimped position. Often she does that to climb more efficiently. She does crimp when she needs to. That's her preferred grip type, not a suggestion that she's getting pumped anyway. <laughs> exactly, dragging away. All right, but now she's, she's shaking a lot. and She does check the clock because she'll know that these uh, moments will cost her in terms of time and they're speeding up suddenly. You can see those tick marks there on the wall. Left hand out, right foot on a small hold and suddenly Brooke with a try hard face on as she approaches the 30 mark. Look at those drags. Drags when you uh, open those fingers up, don't close the thumb over the top. Super strong on those moves. There was lots of funny climbing terminology, isn't there? <laughs> it pretty <really> is, yeah. <laughs> I've run out of the jokes by now. Right, she's shaking those hands. And look at that great shot of that blocked hole. So the blocker there just to make things a little tricky and prevent the heel sometimes. Yeah, just to make force the athletes to be way more precise. And again, making it harder to put the heel next to the hand, just like you said. All right, Brooke is up to third position. In this section, she's getting three points per hold. So each hold that she hits, she'll get an extra three points. When she moves into the next section, that'll be four points per hold. She has two minutes 30 on the clock. She just turned to have a look at that. And it almost looked like she maybe was surprised at how little time there was. And maybe she'll we'll see her pick up the pace or not as she just has a little rest and shake. So she's clearly taken into account how much time she has and chosen to take a little rest here. We do know this move is hard, but she looks smooth through it. She just needs to stay accurate as she moves through these power moves, putting her heel up and really engaging on that. Yeah, toe in as well, camming into that hold. Clever climbing from her. Two minutes on the clock, silver position, and 120.8 her total score. Up towards the head wall now. Now the DJ starts to wrap things up, as does the crowd. Brooks stretching out that left arm, trying to eliminate the pump. Shauna is doing maths next to me <laughs> wildly here. 
My eyes, all of our eyes, look at this, up into the blocked crimp. Oh, the elbows are going now. She looks like she's starting to struggle, but she did get a shake of the hand there. If she can get a little shake of the left hand, maybe she can recover a little bit, but we lose her there with a total point of 137.8. That is not enough to secure her a spot right now. She can be overtaken, so she needs to sit and wait and watch what the other athletes do. And we still do have three athletes to go. Oh, Sean, I can't think I can handle this for much longer here. Three athletes to go, Brooke comes down. Good climb from her, but yes, her eyes are looking up at the scoreboard, which annoyingly for her isn't being displayed on the big screen. So she's gonna have to wait and see, but she'll walk over. She'll look down to the coaches and she acknowledges the crowd who are roaring her on there. And you can see there's some disappointment in Brooke's face. She doesn't look satisfied with her performance. We know Brooke can give so much on the wall. It's unfortunate to see her not feeling or not looking like she felt like she was able to do that. But that lady has a lot more to give this sport, that's for sure. All right, well, let's see a replay of that. She came out immediately air climbing, reminding herself of the moves. That was an awkward way to do that clip down low, but she got it in and looked calm after. Eyes looking over towards the clock, bumping on the left, and that's how she fell. <laughs> Ariane Berton comes out from France, athlete number three to climb. You could see when Brooke came off, she came firing off backwards, suggesting she had nothing left in her arms. Maybe disappointed by how she felt on that climb or how she performed throughout the route. She did look smooth, she did look composed. The route was very hard, but she could have been tired from the boulder round too. These athletes have just come off four very, very difficult boulders. Oriane Batone, all eyes on her in the stadium. Is it kind of, it goes eerily silent right now. Does well, and like, now the crowd kick in yeah, as she falls on. There they go. Well, again, she's a she's a firm favourite here. I mean, look, every athlete here is a favourite. I keep saying favourites, but everyone is being encouraged. But of course, Switzerland very very close to the French border, so uh, there's a lot of her home crowd here as well, and I think that adds to the atmosphere. There are the coaches Roman de Grange in the middle, uh, Coach Nico on the left. Crosses through, Oriane's into the scoring zone. Let's get some points on the board. If she wants to secure herself an Olympic spot tonight, then she will need to get a total of points of a, above 144.5. That is a maximum number of points I could score. Yanya, of course, could go above that as well. But the top three qualify. She cannot beat Jessie's score. The best position she could get herself into right now would be the silver medal position. If she goes above 144.5, I can't catch her. Only Yanya could only bumping her down to fifth. We know Oriane has been training speed. We know she's been fighting to get fitter on the route. Let's see what she can do. Yeah, and she's snatched at that last hold there. So we know she's perhaps more of a boulder and tends to have to thug her way through certain sections. So Oriane is trying to rest and get something back. She'll milk this one. To the chalk bag, trying to get rid of that pump. I did wonder if athletes would rest here, and we do see Oriane take that rest, but suggesting that she needs to. It's a very low rest. We see it's only the 10-point hold. She needs a lot of points. She needs to get a lot of height if she wants to be up in that top three. Yeah, I think she's fighting here, out onto the right. It's just you can see it in her movements. And she's really extended on that foot there, but she makes it work as she steps her feet up. She is fighting there. You can see her arms are starting to bend, and she's starting to look a little flustered here she gets that toe in a difficult clip but she makes it quickly oh okay this is so nervy to watch has the left toe in we'll want another shake here if she can possibly get it she's got a physical section to come remember she has and she can see that 30 point hold it's not far away but her feet are starting to slip around and we we start to see her fluster a little bit here she's chalking out trying to breathe, trying to get her air flowing and trying to compose herself as much as possible. Makes the clip, gets that in. There's the 30. Crowd are clapping behind it to the beat. 
almost missing that hole, doing a great job to stick it. Every hold she gets at this point will be worth three points from here. Come on, Orion. This is gutsy from her. Nearly dropped that. How is she on? Just the fingertips, and she does go on that flat hold on the next one. That leaves her in fifth, and Helen Jenikor closes her eyes in sympathy. She knows what Orianne just went through, but that is not going to be enough for an Olympic place yet on the night. It is, and she is up in fourth currently. That score just updated. She got 39.1. She made a convincing movement to the next hole, getting that point one. Um, but her combined score here is 93.8. It is not currently in that top three, and we do still have two athletes to go. Yeah, Orihan waves to the crowd, fist pumps. She did what she needed. Well, she did as much as she could do. And uh, yeah, I think this that pump on the left. Hugs all round from the other athletes. Ah, oh, well. I'm running out of paper doing maths here. <laughs> <laughs> We've got problems in the commentary box. Someone send paper immediately. <laughs> there is the French team. Helen Jenico, Meiji Schell in the black. And this was Oriane up high, had the healing cross through, but you could see she nearly dropped that move, bumping it. How she held that last crimp, I don't know. Next out, we have I Murray, and she needs to get a total score of 137.8 if she wants to finish in the top three. Provide, well, if she wants to be certain that she'll finish in the top three, that will put her in second with only Yanya Gombrett who can beat her. So this is an important climb for I. She finished the boulder round with a score of 44.5. So. It not a bad score, but not up there with some of the others. I has a lot of work to do here, but we know that she really can pull it out on the lead wall. Yeah, she is our individual lead world champion, remember. Beat Yanya Garnbrett due to count back. She also topped the roots. Let's see what she can do here. She comes up, hits that jib. Up with the right hand. And there's Orian in the foreground as I'm Ori in the background hits the steep part of the wall. And from here on, it's all in the arms, and we've seen a few athletes burn out through these sections. I, Murray, in the semi-finals, she finished the boulder round with 44.9, so a similar to score to today. And then in the lead, she got a 92. If she does that today, we will see her. I mean, told by our tech people behind the scenes. If I'm already does top or the hold before she's qualified, otherwise Brooke is qualified. That's what I'm being told Ooh, in terms of info. Interesting, yeah, so if she gets that 137.8, thank you to everyone for doing the math for <laughs> me. She needs to have a great climb right now. We know she's capable of it, but the pressure is on. Pressure never seeming to fluster eye in the slightest, always looking composed, always looking calm, very rarely making mistakes. And it's the kind of route that might suit her you know, this resistant style of climbing she's really good at. We know I tends to not enjoy the more dynamic moves. There aren't any big, wild dynamic moves on this climb. You said it perfectly. It is resistance climbing. The climbers just have to keep moving and fight the pump, but also not run out of time, which we've seen I do previously. So keep an eye on that clock, but also don't take your eyes off I at the same time. Oh, it's just too many places to look here, and that scoreboard keeps moving as well. <laughs> it's exhausting to watch. And it's brilliant action here for us all. What a sport climbing is. Out to the right crimp. High toe for Imori. Into that pinch again. She seems to be climbing with a really good pace right now. Often we see Ai climbing very slowly, very deliberately, but she's climbing with a great pace. She's got 340 on the clock as she hits the 30 zone. Yeah, down in seventh position, 74.5. Up with the right hand now. Now, she's entering this different section, all the way to the left, back right towards the 60, and then pretty much straight up from there towards the center of the wall where our camera, the clip draw, and the last hold await. 
And we know this next section is powerful. It's going to be zapping her energy. She does look calm and composed, but we've seen climbers have to fight so hard here. Kicks out with the left foot. Eye climbing really efficiently, really straight arms, not having to fight on these moves. You see her hit a hold. When she hits that hold, as soon as she's comfortable, you see her relax into that position, never fighting against herself, climbing really smart through all of these sections so far. Into fourth now. Um, yeah, this blue section nearly finished. One last bump out towards the right as she steps through. And then we enter the final part of this route. Bit of relief for the hands, but the uh, technical climbing steps up a gear. Oh, she just makes that reach through. A huge move up there, but what impressive climbing. She twisted right in, making that move really work for her and her style. Gets this clip in. Okay. Well, that's the last clip of the route before the top, so she doesn't need to worry about that anymore. Now she's, it's just pure climbing. She's climbed herself into bronze medal position and a few moves away from that silver medal. Currently, obviously, we've still got Yanya Gamba to go, but if she gets the silver at this point, she will be going to the Olympics. And I looks up towards the heavily chalked up crimp, nails it first time, swings those legs over, and I not looking yet like she's really struggling too much but pause here as she tries to find her left foot and now she's got to do a big move but drops it and that is her in silver medal 140 so we think that's enough that is enough subject to appeals i Murray will be on the podium Brooke Rabatou moves down to third and it is Yanya Gambra who can stop her getting her ticket tonight it anything can happen <laughs> but Right now, all eyes are on eye as she looks up to the roof, looking disappointed she didn't get it as a Japanese team behind her. <laughs> they are going wild. We just had a shot of them. Brooke's got her headphones in, trying to compose herself, having just taken it all in and having a moment to herself in a, a very private moment on, a, on the stage. I, I want her to I turn around. Now she has. No, she, yeah, she does. doesn't. Well, now, now she, she does. does. A smile across her face. She keeps herself composed for the entire competition, but great to see a big reaction from her as she goes and hugs her fellow competitors. I just was desperate for her. I couldn't believe how long she was looking at the route. She was so concerned with what she climbed. Oh, great work from Imori. <laughs> That's one of my favorite moments of the whole competition, that her face when she lit up when someone obviously told her. We talk about how invested these athletes are, how dedicated and committed to the climbs and to what they're doing. Her focus was entirely on that last move for so much longer than anyone wanted it to be. She almost looked totally devastated that she didn't mean it. You can see what it means to the Japanese coaches there, but I was still thinking about that top move and why it didn't work out. I. You can let that one go and you can celebrate tonight because you are going to the Paris Olympic Games in 2024. Okay, well, we have our last climber out and Yanya has work to do. Of course, nearly trips up once more. She's got to obviously carry on climbing. It's not a given here. And we saw the rope tension there, almost looked like the b -lails. Just making sure she didn't drop off the stage. <laughs> Don't want to see that, Yanya. All right. Well. Oh, and she strides towards the wall with a confidence like we haven't seen yet in this competition. She wants to get it done here. Brooke Rabatou in the danger spot, down in third. 5.55 on the clock. Taking in those scores, so that's where she needs to get to for gold, silver and bronze. So we have an idea of where she needs to go. Yeah, and Brooke Rabatou's score of 137.8. So that's the total score that Yanya needs to get if she wants to be in a podium position. I expect she will be eyes on the top of this route, though. I wonder if she knows if I topped or not. Yanya's familiar with waiting behind the wall, and she'll know what the crowd's reaction usually sounds like for a top. So I, I'm not sure. But 
also, let's not forget, she finished with a silver medal in the Lead World Championships. Maybe there's a little bit of redemption to be had tonight because she did top that route. It did come back to count back. And we did also see Yanya slip in the semi-finals with a foot pop. I expect she's going to be climbing incredibly confidently and purposefully as it looks like she is right now. She'll be wanting that top jug in her hands and we know that she's capable of it and so does she. Yeah, she does. 137.8. That's what she needs to get. She doesn't know. We know. And it's making it oh, just so much to deal with here. <laughs> Up towards the 10. It's on 94.9 now. Getting massive support from the crowd, as you can see, as she gets those feet down. I, I can't imagine the pressure climbing last at a World Champs like this with that much on the line. I saw Yanya earlier on in the Athlete Hub. She was looking so happy, so confident. It is great to see when Yanya brings her best self to the competitions. It is a wonderful spectacle to witness. It's such a small margin though, isn't it? One little mistake, one hand in the wrong place, a foot on the wrong middle hold, and that's it. So nothing confirmed, but that's where she needs to get towards. Hold 39 or 54 points will get her enough points to get in. Brooke Rabatou must be, again, just, oh, I can't even, I can't even try to describe what she must be feeling either. Shaking out, she's totally focused on the next set of holds here. Climbing much slower than we often see Yanya climb. Um, she tends to, she's, we've seen her finish routes with time on the clock, but we have also seen her time out. Climbing very deliberately, little micro sh shakes as you saw there, wanting to climb as efficiently as possible so she's got enough left to give on that head wall, on that top section, but she can only try those moves if she gets through these next ones. So she needs to stay focused and calm as she moves through every single hold on this route and it's not far there's just a few moves to go until she moves into that third position guaranteeing her an olympic spot guaranteeing her a medal tonight but there's only one color of medal that yanya really likes to get <laughs> she'll want the gold but her fans will just want a few more points on the board she's on 135 now she's at 138.9 and the crowd react I wonder if Yanya knows and we're about to see a different Yanya because sometimes she just flips it and she's up to silver. Shauna, we know our Olympic places, but we don't know our gold medal yet. Will it be Jesse Piltz? Will it be Yanya Garnbra? We know our Olympic places, but we want to see a top. So does the crowd. And Yanya would love to give us one. Come on, Yanya. Let's see a top. Yeah, let's see a top. It will be a lovely end to this women's competition. Straight arm resting. And Yanya will have an idea from the crowd, surely, but that won't affect her right now. She wants the gold. I'm not even sure if it's about the gold medal for Yanya. She wants the top, just like I, focusing on that top hold after she came down. Yanya wants to climb everything that's put in front of her. She trains as hard as she can to be ready for anything that these root setters put on the wall. I don't envy the root setters having to set for this field in the slightest. <gasps> oh, it's a pop from Yanya, but she is in the first position. She turns around immediately, thank goodness, because the coaches <laughs> are screaming at her. And she's waiting, she's waiting. I don't think she knows yet. It's not confirmed for her. And look, she must see it now. <laughs> yeah. I had an inhale of breath in oh. that foot pop, but look at that. Look at what it means to her. Look how happy she is. She's glancing up at the leaderboard. A little look at the route, too. <laughs> wow, Yanya Gambra is the lead and boulder world champion. She is going to the Olympic Games. Jessica Pilt is, and so is I, Mori. What a show that was. We didn't see a top, but it was full of action throughout. I have slightly lost control here in the commentary box. It doesn't often <laughs> happen, but I was on my feet there for a moment. Well, the coaches are hugging each other down there. What else can Yanya Garnbrett do in the world of climbing? I mean, what an ambassador. And she will fight again at the Games next summer. And Brooke Rabatou, I mean, what a fight she put up. She came so, so close. She will have other chances, as we discussed. But tonight, it's not enough for Brooke. And you can see Yanya knows, and Yanya knows what that must feel, and she comforts her.
What a moment, what a competition. This has been a wild night and the crowd are going insane right now. Matt beside me is going a little <laughs> bit insane too. I'm, ne I'm kneeling on my chair, spinning around in circles. That's how much I was into that one. Wow, that was incredible. Okay, well, Yanya takes the harness off. And the evening isn't quite over yet because we will have the flower ceremony. Shauna's interview, and we think she's going to interview all of the Olympians, if we can gather them in one place anyway. I need to run over. Yeah, you do in a minute, and then the podium later on. And let's see that again from Yanya. So she prepared herself, foot on the wall, and just holding it all together when it needed to the most. Look at those eyes, laser focused up there. All right, well, Shauna, I'll say goodbye to you because you've got to go do some interviews, but we're back tomorrow for the men's comp. We've got to do all this again. We are, and Yanya Gombrich's name announces to the crowd. That's the screaming you hear behind us. Thank you so much for having me, Matt. It was an absolute privilege to witness those moments as our Olympians to be, or two current Olympians, double Olympians to be for Jesse and Yanya and I, Murray. They are announced on stage. Look what it means to them. Look how happy they are. Wow, what a magical moment. All right, Shauna. See you later. Thank you. One, two, three. Confirmed. Jesse goes over to uh, the mat. Yanya's going to walk over to the side of the stage for Shauna's interview. You can see her being uh, ushered over there as she approaches those lights over on the left. And then Nina Caprez will interview someone on stage. Not quite sure who she's grabbed. I think it's Jesse. What moments that was. Yeah, Jesse on stage as well. I'll be quiet and let you hear this interview. Well, that's confirmation of the results. 177 total for Yanni Gambrett, 157 Jesse Piltz, 140.6. I, Mori, Barabatu in fourth, just pushed outside. Oh, it's got to be hard to deal with, but she will be back, of course. She has more chances. Jean Kim in fifth, Oriane Berton sixth, Miho Nanaka seventh, Annie Sanders in eighth. Congratulations to all the women, of course, but special congratulations to the Olympians to be. You can see the boulder, the lead, and the combined totals telling the story of this competition. And uh, I'm Maury, just the most hilarious, <laughs> genuine reaction I've ever seen. <laughs> Didn't look around for such a long time, just cared about the route. And that shows what kind of state of mind she climbs in. It's, it's not easily flustered, is I, Maury. And that might uh, hold her in good stead because she will be on the biggest of stages in about a year's time. Yeah, we talk about the Continental champion, uh, Qualifiers. It'll be done by the end of the year in the OQS Series next year. And then those Olympic Games after that. And go back and watch the speed if you haven't already. It was a brilliant. I put on my Instagram that I thought it was one of the best speed finals I've ever witnessed because of the drama that we saw. And I'm not going to give anything away, but go and have a look at that if you haven't already, because, wow, if you don't understand speed or don't get it, that competition might change your mind because it had every range of emotions we could possibly experience. It was wonderful. Go and check that out. And while we're talking about things to check out, the World Climbing Club, our daily show. We're on show number 11 now. Makes me realise how long we've been here. Highlights, interviews, behind the scenes footage. Well, yesterday's show was a 20 minute treat, so go and check that out. Paraclimbing and speed highlights. Discover why and how Tomoe Narasaki invented the Tomoe skip on the speed wall. Yep, that's right. 
He made that move named after him by Sean McCall, it turns out. So go and see that on YouTube. Subscribe so you don't miss any of the action. A few more of those shows to come over the next few days. Now, a podium is being built, as you can see, being carried through the arch onto the stage. And on the left, you can see a big movement under the lights. That's our media area. That's where Shauna will be for Yanya. That's where the athletes leave. And the crowd, trust me, just gather in that area, waiting for their favourites to come out. And our winner here tonight will be mobbed. <laughs> and tomorrow is the men's competition so we've done the women's we now do it all again tomorrow for the men's four more boulders a brand new lead route and we're trying to give away three more tickets so we will give away three more tickets ten in total for this event And do stay with us for uh, this podium to come. Speed wall all lit up and colourful on the left there. It's been stripped of its roots. The boulder will be pulled down tonight. That will be stripped. A new set of boulders put up. And then, of course, the lead wall as well. That'll have a brand new route. And thank you to the route setters for working so hard on setting these climbs. It's not an easy task, especially with this scoring system. You don't want to be the team that makes a mistake. But I enjoyed that set of boulders. I enjoyed the lead climb. A very different style of lead climb from some of the ones that we've seen in the individual events. And good to see that range of styles. This one, static. Athletes having to grind their way upwards. Not big movements in there. But good to see that range of styles so we can show you at home all the ability that these athletes have. just joining us but he's missed all the action it's done we just got the interview and the podium to come and we get to celebrate with the athletes who have got the medals and of course won a ticket So I think Shauna has found Yanya, so let's go down to them. Yanya, it is a privilege to be speaking to you right now. You've got tears in your eyes, I've got tears in my eyes. We just had maybe the most, most emotional hug I've ever had in my entire life. Can you tell us how you're feeling? I feel incredible and relieved at the same time. It feels so amazing. Today I was so, um, I was so composed today actually. Like I was climbing like the lead route flawlessly and I'm just so incredibly happy right now that I qualified. Even though I qualified already once, but you don't get tired of this feeling for qualifying at the Olympics. So my second Olympics, here we go. You are going to Paris 2024. <laughs> it's, you, you're going to get an actual ticket don't know if you know that but yeah a physical ticket but that doesn't mean anything the fact that you've qualified here tonight does the world championship mean anything the gold medal is it even important was it all about the olympics tonight i mean definitely that's why we came here to qualify for the olympics to get that olympic ticket uh, but that doesn't mean that other world championship titles don't mean anything to me they still do but this is was a special moment like it's so hard to Climb your best under this kind of pressure to be in the top three to qualify. And I managed to do that today. I climbed composed and I was just so happy on the wall, just 
so relaxed and I'm just so grateful for all the cheering because without the public, I probably wouldn't be able to climb this good. I think you definitely would. We all know what you've got in you. You talk about pressure. Nobody could understand the amount of pressure that you are under as Janja Gombrit, the most accomplished athlete in our sport. Going, uh, going towards Paris, that's going to be building. We know you can climb under pressure. Are you going to Paris for the gold medal? Everyone wants to know. Surely, we think you are. You should think you are, but do you? Well, I mean, it's uh, definitely your first part of the question is definitely hard to climb under pressure but I just like keep remembering why I started in the first place because I'm having fun and this is what I try to do in the most high pressure environment so uh, I managed to do that today and uh, of course I have one Olympic title of course I want to defend it uh, but girls will be training hard I will be training hard so we will see and one last question, I won't keep you much longer. You were a young girl watching these competitions once. What do you say to people watching that have big goals, to the young people watching that want to achieve things? Do you have any words for them? I do. Um, passion is everything. Just like keep having fun. That's the most important thing and you will achieve everything you want. Yanya, that was absolutely beautiful. We can see your passion on the wall and we can see just how much of fun you are having. And this smile right now, how you feel, it says it all. Congratulations and a huge, huge congratulations on absolutely everything you've done before too. But Thank tonight, you. celebrate that world championship and the Olympic spot because you deserve it. Thank you so much. Well, congratulations to Yanni Garbrecht. Great interview there to get an insight into what she's thinking and feeling. Well, we found Jessie, so let's go down to the front to talk to her. Jesse, what a moment. You had to fight hard out on that lead route. Going in, did you know how much you needed to do? Did you know how important that performance was? Um, well, well, I knew my bouldering route round was kind of good, but um, yeah, it was still all open till the end. And um, I really knew yeah, I had to do to give like all on the lead route and uh, do my best. And yeah, I wasn't sure um, when I fell if it's enough or not. And then the coach had showed me then that it should be enough. And then, yeah, I couldn't really believe. I really wanted to, to wait till the end, till it's safe. And my math uh, didn't work. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I couldn't believe it, actually. You were sat on stage. The camera was on you. Everyone was almost screaming at you to tell you you had an Olympic spot. You looked in disbelief. Has it sunk in yet? Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> it, it still feels surreal. I don't know. I, yeah. Almost and, lost for words, yeah. it seems like. Did you come into this competition hunting for an Olympic spot? Were you, did you, were you sure you might get one or maybe not so sure? How did it feel coming into this finals tonight? Were you ready to leave it all out on the wall? Uh, I knew it was possible for everyone in the finals. Um, I wasn't really happy with the single disciplines um, of the results. Um, so I really wanted to give it like my all and um, yeah, it worked out. You're going to be, you're already an Olympian, you're going to be a double Olympian going to Paris 2024. You said you weren't happy with the single disciplines. Are you happy right now? Yeah, I'm really happy. I, I really, I was so nervous the whole day today and I really tried to keep the pressure low and uh, just try to give my best out there and not focus on the result or anything. Um, I think it worked out quite well and yeah, it's crazy. Worked out quite well, <laughs> that it did. You have a medal from the Lead and Boulder World Championships and an Olympic ticket. Congratulations, Jesse. Thank, Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you so much to Jesse. Super emotional and hard to put into words. What well, she must be feeling there. Yanni's on stage. Uh, I'll let you listen to that.
I've been told that they found Brooke Rabatou down on the stage, so let's go to our fourth place finisher. Hey, Brooke, Hi. I know this isn't the result that you wanted, and I know it's going to be hard for you to do this interview. Thank you so much for speaking to us. This was an intense fight in the finals. So many girls are coming up strong. A lot of people, a lot of pressure on you tonight. How did it feel out there to climb in front of such an amazing crowd? Honestly, I, I had a lot of fun out there. Like, the boulders were really fun. There were some hard moves that, um, you know, I've, I've been working really hard for this, and I feel like I was able to be in a good mental place for the boulders to just give it my all and really, like, do it for myself. Um, and then the rope climb, I, I definitely fought. I kind of was already bleeding, like, halfway on the wall on my left hand. Oh, wow. So that was a little hard, but um, I definitely tried really hard, so I can't be too upset about that. You did look like you fought to the end. It looked like you were really fighting. Of course, that's how you want to finish a lead round. Not the result that you wanted, but there are more chances. Are your eyes on the next Olympic qualification, the Pan American Continentals? Uh, yeah, for sure. I'm definitely going to take some time to decompress from this event, um, but I think there's a lot of good takeaways throughout the whole event. I got to go through every single round and fight really hard. And um, I know I'm going to come out learning a lot uh, once I process everything. There is a lot to process. I appreciate you talking to us right now. It is an emotional night for many people. Success stories and those not managing to achieve what they wanted. There are more opportunities, Brooke. Please keep that smile that we all love to see on your face. You have got so much more to give this sport. Stay positive, Brooke. Thank you so much. And thanks to everyone who's helped throughout the entire event. It was really seamless and like the volunteers were incredible and all the athletes so I honestly I had a blast out there I'm definitely disappointed right now but just want to say thank you I'm very grateful thank you Brooke yeah thank you Brooke a hard one to do but good to hear her thoughts after that competition of course she does have more chances and we are trying to sort out more interviews for you I think we've got I Murray on the way but we'll see so yeah, Brooke Rabatou, hats off to you for uh, being such a competitor and also for doing that chat. But I think, as she said, she did her best. She can't be unhappy with that. Well, we have found I, Mori, so let's go down and see I. We heard the question asked earlier in the arena. I, are you happy? Uh, yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> You look so composed, but we saw a huge smile. Did you feel nervous before you climbed? Yes, but uh, when just climbing, I'm very exciting. So, but I want to, I wanted to reach the top. But Olympic ticket is very happy. <laughs> Hopefully the Olympic ticket is maybe better than reaching the top, but we could see you were looking at the top of the wall. You got so close to getting to the top and you get to stand on the podium. You get your Olympic ticket. Have you been to Paris before? Uh, yes, just, just training. Just training? Well, yeah. you get to go there and become an Olympian. A huge congratulations, I Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to Aimori as well. I think that might be the end of our interviews, I think. You never know. I'm sure Shauna will be happy to talk to anyone coming through that area. But I think it might be time for those athletes to go and make their way backstage, prepare themselves for the podium. Let's have a look at our winner's highlights, shall we? See Yanya's way to the top. And this is I, Mori. I think we're showing all... all the uh, podium finishes in this highlight reel. There was Imori crossing through near the top, and that was the reaction from the Japanese coaches. I spent a long time looking up on the wall. They had a really good moment where she was uh, staring upwards. Jesse Piltz, good bouldering round. She said it herself. Fist pumping in the air over. On that cross through move, that was a bit of a turning point for her and carrying on the strength and then all the way to the top. That was her fall. She thought she maybe could have gone a bit further, but it didn't matter in the end.
the reaction with the Austrian coaches, as you'd expect. And Janja Garmbra, oh, she did it again. She's qualified again. And she'll get to fight for a gold again. Her lead route, as she said, pretty much flawless until she fell. And look at that from the coaches. Huge for Yanya Garnbrett. She gets to go away now and train for the games. Well, our podium is ready. The athletes are there. The dignitaries are there and the medals are waiting. I'm not sure if we'll get to see the ticket on the live, on the broadcast, but um, they do get one. I've seen it, I promise. It's there. Jessie cannot keep that smile on her face. The other two looking serious. Yanya, I think, in her world, and then I with a smile and then look down. Well, she stands up in third place for the Boulder and Lead competition. And after this, we'll just get three tickets to give away. from Jessie as she stands in a silver medal spot. She's a vice boulder and lead world champion. Good work from her. And finally, the gold medalist tonight, top spots, two golds and a silver to Yanya Garnbrett's World Championships. Brilliant from her. She's your winner here tonight. Well, for the final time for the women, they'll stand together on that top spot. Yanni Garmet, Jesse Piltz, I'm Ori. I imagine they'll be celebrating tonight as they leave the stage for the last time here in Bern. Right, well, we'll say goodbye for tonight. Thank you, Shauna Coxie, for joining me. We'll be back tomorrow for the men's side of this competition where three more Olympic places will be given away. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you soon, everyone.